Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for the Tech Guy is provided by Cashfly. C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Hi, this is Leo Laporte, and this is my Tech Guy podcast. This show originally aired on the Premier Radio Networks on Sunday, August 18th, 2013. This is episode 1006. Enjoy. The Tech Guy podcast is brought to you by Bespoke Post, a product subscription club for men. Bespoke Post's monthly box of awesome keeps you up in the latest in food, drink, fashion, and more. For 20% off your first box, visit bespokeposts.com slash twit. Well, hey, 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 how are you today? Leo Laporte here, the tech guy, and it's time, yes, indeed, for your worst nightmare, a geek with his honor, ain't he, show. Hey, how are you? Actually, I may be a geek, but you don't have to be. This is a show for anybody who wants to know more about what's going on in, I used to say computers. Do we even talk about computer? I guess we do a little bit. Whatever happened to computers? Oh, they're in your pocket. That's what happened. So we'll talk about computers, whether they're on your desk, in your lap, or on your in your pocket, or on your head, or on your wrist. We'll talk about smartphones, which we've decided not to call smartphones because who uses phones anymore? Mobiles. That sounds like something you put over a baby's crib. It's not. <laughs> we got to find a name because who makes phone calls? Not not very often anymore with these things. A computer in your pocket. Uh, we talk about home theater and digital photography. Our digital photographer, Chris Marquardt's back. He'll be on. What? Oh, you gasped. I wanted to <gasps> upload a picture. Oh, a picture, yeah. For the contest. For the contest. Well, I think you have a little more time. It's not a contest. Yeah. That's not a contest implies there might be some winnings involved. No. Right. We just look at pictures. Your winnings would be we'll that you somebody noticed your pictures. We'll say your name on the radio. Were you? That's, by the way, Heather Homan, who is our call screener. We got uh, Nathan Strain at the uh, Strayton as the uh, as the musical director back in the <laughs> back at the bank. transmitter shack. He's in the transmitter shack. <laughs> oh right. Oh yeah. He's the guy who's cranking the knobs and <laughs> he's got to tune the super heterodyne transceiver to make sure that this radio show is beamed directly into that box in your car, on your desk, in your shower. Show of hands. How many of you are listening in the show? No, put your hands back down. Oh my gosh. Do you play are you uh do you play Plants vs. Zombies? No, do you know I, that game? I guess I don't since I Shocked. haven't heard of it before. <laughs> Shocked to hear that you do not play that game. Say it again, Plants, Plants versus... versus Zombies. Well, you're in luck because the greatest game of all time awaits you. Okay. Um, it is a... Uh, so you... <laughs> how do I describe this? It's a zombie game. Everybody loves zombies. Yeah. They're the most cuddly little creatures ever. But they're attacking your house, trying to eat your brains. You know how zombies can get. And so your job is to, oddly enough, garden... In order to avoid being eaten by zam zombies, it turns out you have some very vicious plants. So the more carrots I grow, the yeah. Well, more it's the not. There's you got pea egg. shooters, you've got <laughs> cabbage guns, you got. Ah. So you're planting a garden, oh. and the zombies are marching in, and the gar and the plants. It's plants versus zombies. I totally get it because zombies eat meat, and they don't. They don't. Want they're not vegetarians, so yeah. Well, they will eat your plants too, but so you got to oh. keep them. It's but they a, really want to eat it's you. A ch yeah. <laughs> you lose the game if they get your brains. But it's a challenging game. It's a fun game. And uh, it was one of the, you know, so I, it's interesting because it was originally created by Pop Gap, Cap Games as a flash game on the desktop. But when the iPad came out, it was such a natural place for it that it took off. And it was my opinion, perhaps certainly in the top five, if not the best iPad game of all time, because... It's not somebody trying to shoehorn a game into the touch interface. It's just naturally touchy because you, you plant the, the things. It's just fit, it just fits the, uh, the uh, UI. Well, the only, and the only reason I bring it up is because uh, the new one just came out. So this is the last show I'm going to do for the next couple of months because I'm going to be busy defending my garden against zombie attack. It's really a fun game, actually. It's quite an entertaining game. 
Um, and they did something which I guess is hip and with it and timely. It's free. Now, the, the original Plants vs. Zombies wasn't free. Well, you know, mobile games can't be too expensive, so I don't know, a few bucks. But what they're doing this time uh, is what everybody's doing. They, you know, these pop cap guys are no fools. They give you the game for free, but then <laughs> they get you. Because they have a little store, and you can buy stuff to make the game easier. You can buy coins. You can buy plants. And what people have learned, both game manufacturers and players, is you spend a lot more money on a game if it's free than you ever did buying it. Lots more money. On, I've told you the sad tale of my donuts, right? Oh, this is, by the way, and I, I swore after this I would never play in another electronic arts game again. And uh, unfortunately, OMG Pop, which created Plants vs. Zombies, was purchased by Electronic Arts. But I still consider them an outshoot. I'm, I'm going to play this game. It's really fun. But I'm not giving them any money because I've spent $300 on donuts, and that's not allowed. Not real donuts, not donuts you can eat. You no, know, I don't get the benefit of getting fat from these donuts. These are in-game in donuts for that stupid Simpsons tapped out game. And I've been playing it for eight or nine months. And it's it's one of those farming games where, you know, but it's nice because it's got Homer and Marge and the, and Bart and Lisa. and the, So it's like your friends. And every once in a while, Homer will pop up on my on my phone and say, push notification. <laughs> 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 Which it just cracks me up every time. Uh, not so popular in the meetings that I go to. But other, you know, because he's loud. But um, is that Homer in your pocket? Yeah. Every once in a while, I get a look of acknowledgement from another addict to this horrible game, The Simpsons Tapped Out. Um, I, I don't like freemium because it, you, they suck you in, and you start playing the game. And if you want to get the Springfield sign, oh, you know, it's like the Hollywood sign lines for Springfield. It's like it's like donuts. You got to it's like 120 donuts. And how do you get donuts? Oh, you can earn donuts, three donuts at a time, <laughs> or you go to the donut store and you buy donuts. And I calculated it and I've spent more than $300 on one game in donuts. That's ridiculous. But they get you. They suck you in. And then Electronic Arts crashed my game. <laughs> and I'm, In a way, I think they were doing me a favor. Maybe they knew. There may be this algorithm in the, in the game where, uh-oh, this guy's got a donuts, Jones. We better, <laughs> we better cut him off. I've been cut off. They crashed the game. I emailed Electronic Arts. They said... Well, uh, tell us, send us the <laughs> IDs of all the devices it crashes on. So I send them the, uh, with great difficulty, I think I've told this story before, great difficulty, the IDs of the 10 devices that crashed on. And then I pointed out, and everybody who visits my town crashes. And then they sent me a note back saying, well, you're right, it crashed me too. <laughs> oh, but we'll, be, we'll get back to you. That's been, it's been two weeks. They're never going to fix it. But I'm, I'm considering myself off the hook. So I'm warning you, don't ever play this game because it will suck you in. And now I'm going to try. I'm going to do something unheard of. This is the equivalent of swimming the English Channel. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to try to play Plants vs. Zombies 2 without buying anything. No cold hard currency. I'm going to make this free game be free if it kills me. Look at this. $3.99 for a thing that ignites peas for double damage. $3. That's American. That's not, that's oh not imaginary God. coin. The snow pea shoots peas that slow zombies. That's that's four dollars too, so they get you because there's a lot of this stuff, right? But you know, two ninety nine at a time. That's a, you know, it's like a it's a latte. But that's why I want to tell you this cautionary tale. It adds up, folks. You don't want to be one of those people, one of those nitwits who spends three hundred dollars on a mobile video game. That would be dumb. Who would do that? They keep pulling me in. <laughs> so I'm gonna. I swear. My girlfriend, Lisa, she, she bought some stuff. She said, oh, I bought some stuff. I said, "I'm no. She tried, you know, she's, come on. Oh, it's just a couple of bucks. Come on. I said, no. I am going to I am going to beat this game without giving Electronic Arts one penny because they already owe me 300 donuts. We shall see. We shall see. Only a twit would do that. Give them <laughs> money to play a video game. What kind of crazy talk is that? 8888-ASK-LEO. That's my phone number. If you want to share your tale of whoa, whoa, whoa. That's how Keanu Reeves says it. Whoa. Your tale of whoa, whoa with me. 8888 Ask Leo. 
888-827-5536. That's toll free from anywhere in the uh, United States of America. If you're outside the U.S., we got calls yesterday mm. from England, from uh, somewhere else. Dusseldorf. Dusseldorf, Germany. The house. <laughs> they listen on the internet. No problem. Use Skype. It's free. We're going to go to the phones. Call Heather. Let's get you on right now. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Mm, 300 donuts. No, no, $300 worth of donuts. That's three boatloads. I think it's 2,400 donuts in a boatload. Hey, we all love computers, but you know. <laughs> that's, that's a lot of donuts. Mm. And, so, and that's the other thing is now they have still have 1,400 uh, donuts of mine. Which is uh, more than one hundred fifty dollars worth of my donuts? No, that's not right. It's a lot of donuts. Whatever it is, they have my don't. You are hold. You got my. So I'm gonna get them one way or the other. They're gonna. I'm gonna get them. They're gonna give me my donuts back. Of course, they say here's your donuts. Uh, good. Luck. Have fun in Springfield. Mm. Is it toll free in Canada? Have you tried it, Rock and Robin? I was told it was only U.S. Donuts Anonymous, I know. I admit I have no control over my donuts. No, they weren't plain donuts. They had pink pink icing and sprinkles. Actually, it's better for me. I know, I've wasted a lot of money. They're pointing out I spent more than $5,000 on that stupid laptop, the, the steampunk laptop that's just sitting there because it's unusable. And uh, and twenty five hundred dollars on the Segway for my iPad. <laughs> I'm not shocked. <laughs> I'm an idiot. <laughs> but it's 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 an it's an, it's for this it's for Twit. You know, it's for the. Really, you want to talk money? I spent a million and a quarter on this studio. I mean that. See, once you've spent a million dollars to build a studio, a few thousand bucks here or there, it just doesn't really register I, I someday I'm gonna make the calculation on how much I've invested into it because you know it's all it's all my out of my pocket there's no investors and uh, but you know we have 25 we probably have uh, oh a payroll of a quarter million a month I've probably invested 10 million dollars into it over the you know eight years something like that so what's a thousand dollars here or there, right? Just money. And the only reason I got in this game back in 1978 when I did, I'm not talking radio, I'm talking technology, so I could get all the gadgets. I made a pledge to my, I swear, I remember this vividly. It was when the Lisa came out and I was looking at it. Oh, I want that. So maybe it wasn't, it was maybe 1981. Because I was writing for Byte and Full World by then, and being a DJ, I said to myself, "How whatever it takes, I always want to have the latest and greatest." And at that time, up was computer. Unfortunately, the universe has expanded. <laughs> but I do. I have always have the latest and greatest devices, like the Moto X, Moto Hello Moto. Yeah, that's right. Marie on Travel said I did that for... You know, if you really... If you have a passion for something, as I do for technology, and you can find a way to make a living pursuing your passion, it's good. That is a good thing. That is happy. We have 25 full-time employees, you know, staff members, and then quite a few contractors. Heather's a contractor. Quite a few. And, you know, Steve Gibson and Paul Thur. Although, all, you know, all the... Contributors on the shows, those are all contractors, probably 60 or 70 contractors. And we have very, we pay good benefits. They get health insurance, a 401k, they even get a pension. What? I know. <laughs> <laughs> I want to work here. <laughs> well, I, my, my feeling is, first of all, I was an employee until recently, so I, I want to take care of employees, but... My feeling is that we invest a lot in people because this is unusual stuff they're learning. I don't want to lose them. Nathan. You're rubbing it in, Nathan. <laughs> oh. 
Thanks. Thanks a lot. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. <laughs> Web 4111. We, 4011. We have a chat room. If you go to the website, techguylabs.com, you can get into the chat room. Web 4011 says, I was in the shower when you asked, and I did not raise my hand. Thank you. <laughs> 8888 ask leo 888-827-5536 toll free from anywhere in the u.s somebody said from canada too I, I can't verify that i'm only going off of what the phone company tells me but you will be calling into our beautiful tech guy labs here in northern california heather Hammond will answer the call we'll query you we'll grill you we'll prep you will polish and shine you up and then put you on the line. And Heather, you've done that to somebody, some wonderful person. Why don't we pick the first call of the day? Who it's should it be? Jo George in Santa Monica. He has a great question for you. All right. About privacy. George Santa Monica, Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hi, George. Good morning. How are you doing? I am well. How are you, sir? Well, I watch you and I watch Steve Gibson. And I notice that Google, people can read your uh, emails, right? But if I sent you a letter with the same content in that letter as the email, but if somebody opens that letter, they get fined like $5,000 in imprisonment. It's a federal crime. That's right. Right. Now, how can the email with the same content not be a crime? Because uh, nobody made it a crime. So the, uh, the, the Congress made it a crime to open and read uh, email. They made it a federal crime. Uh, snail mail, I should say. Snail mail, yeah. okay. But they never bothered to do that for electronic communications. In fact, our, our vaunted Department of Justice has ruled, has held, although no one has yet challenged this in court, that email that is over six months old is abandoned. And they don't even, they don't need a search warrant or anything to read that. They, right. they can just say, hey, that's abandoned, and it doesn't. nobody owns it because it's old. Now, I should point out the same thing is true in an office. When you're on a phone call and your boss picks up the phone to listen, is she, is she on a personal call? I know, a Smithers. And he picks up the phone. If he hears you, the law says, if he hears you uh, talking personal, he has to hang up. He has right. a, a legal requirement not to eavesdrop on you. On the other hand... Because Congress never passed a law against it, and the courts have upheld it time and time again, everything you do on a computer at work is fair game. There is no privacy at work. And there have been many court cases to test that. And anything you do on a computer, you're doing, uh, the, the, the work can spy on you, can capture it, do anything they want with it completely legally because you're using their computer. Now, that's the same thing. The phone is their phone. But yeah. and it's because uh, laws take a long time to catch up, and tech moves so darn fast. Well, maybe they'll make a change. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we could ask for it to make a change. Until until then, I'll be I'll be honest. We also have learned in this whole prism rev revelation, uh, as things have come out, that it turns out for years the post office has been uh, scooping up what they call the metadata. They can't read inside the envelope, but mm -hmm. they can take a picture of. The to and from addresses, and they do, and they are putting that in a database. Mm. And it, it, we have learned uh, in all of this that this so-called metadata, not the contents of your email or your mail, but who it's to, who it's from, the subject line in the case of email, all of that can be amazingly valuable. Once you start stitching it together, you can see a web of communications. It's very helpful in tracking down terrorists. So. Uh, they collect that also, and they don't. Uh, the the feeling is, uh, while they do believe that anything under six months old, they're gonna. They say we're gonna we're gonna ask for legal approval. Usually not publicly, but from a FISA court before. Thanks we for read letting it. us use your brain. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't it good news, George? Hey, thank you for the call. I I, I appreciate it. It's funny because this whole conversation has changed considerably. Remember, it was just a few months ago that Microsoft put out those Scroogled ads. Did you ever see those? And before that, the Gmail man. <laughs> Microsoft, in hindsight, uh, kind of uh, pettily and perhaps even disingenuously, uh, put out ads saying, Google's reading your email. That's how they know what ads to give you because they're reading your email. Well... Anybody who's looking uh, for spam, any any email system that kills spam is also reading your email. That's how it works. If it didn't read the email, it couldn't kill the spam. Now, the problem is the word read implies like there's a human being. 
<laughs> with little reading glasses looking over each and every... Oh, I see what George has been doing. That's not really what's happening in the case of Google or Microsoft. Their uh, computers are scanning it for keywords. And uh, if the keyword is Viagra, boom, it's spam. But if the keyword is mom's funeral, you might get, kind of creepily, I admit, an ad for funeral services in your on your Gmail page. Same thing, though. It's a computer looking for keywords. It's not some human reading it. That's why our language has also not really kept up with what's going on. But for a long time, this was the conversation. Oh, Google reads your mail. Oh. And uh, Microsoft made a big deal about the Gmail man. They intentionally personified it. Of course, now we know that Microsoft had been letting the federal government read your mail for years before this ad. So come on, Microsoft. <laughs> Let's, they were the first, <laughs> the first company to keel over for the NSA and say, yeah, sure, whatever you want. They, long before Google did, <laughs> Microsoft said, come on in, guys. So uh, who, do you, who do you worry more about, the Gmail man or the G-man? And that's really the fundamental question. G you know, Google's reading your mail, if read is the right word. They scan electronically, they scan mail for keywords, for ads, for marketing reasons. They're not really even tar you know, s singling you out. What they, what they do is they tell advertisers, hey, we have 33,000 people who are talking about gardening in their email. Would you like to put a hose ad next to the page? And you could tell it doesn't work all that well because the ads aren't that well targeted. On the other hand, the federal government is, and, and you know, probably this was all very uh, benign. It was designed to not track individuals, not track American citizens, but merely to try to track down terrorists. And I think that's a good thing to do the problem is that we are learning that you can't trust government employees any more than you could trust every human being out there and you know when it's a kind of a sexy phone call they might just you know pass it along to others uh we know this has happened that you are being spied on and which is worse you know i don't i don't even think it's so advertising big deal even passing around sexy phone calls okay What's, what's really scary is if they decide, a uh, government, for instance, decides that it, it gets less a little less benign and decides it wants to start targeting its citizens for political reasons, they've got lots of material now. Lots. And they've been saving it, you know. <laughs> They're saving it up just in case for a rainy day. So that's what scares me. Oh, our government would never do that. J. Edgar Hoover never collected information on Martin Luther King. That would never happen here. That's what scares me. And so advertising, okay, yeah. Yeah, that's, not, I mean, I, I, and by the way, you, you can opt out. You don't have to do that. You can, you can either use it in an incognito fashion, the browsers let you do that, or just not use Gmail. Use a mail service that doesn't provide you with advertising. You can't opt out of government surveillance. There's no button for that. 8888-ASK-LEO, that's the phone number. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. James is telling me what soup is available now. I have what a chat room. <laughs> well, you. That's a good point. If you send something to a user on Gmail, it's being scanned. But you know what? Uh, it's being scanned for anti spam. Does that bother you? This can be scanned by computers looking for keywords to me. I mean, there's no intelligence looking at that at all. That's not strictly true. Breaking and entering is uh, still illegal, as is covering it up. iPhone 880277 says, everything Nixon resigned over is illegal. No, no, I'm afraid it's, it's now legal. It's not. <laughs> ah, your antivirus reads all your stuff, too, in the same exact way. That's right. Anthony Weiner is reading all my mail. That's No, that's wrong. That's not true. Mm. Mm. Open my Facebook. Oh, yeah, I can thank uh, B. 
BFT. I try to avoid Facebook. You worry people are worried about Google and then and then they pour every bit of personal information on Facebook? Come on. Minds over matter. San Francisco Chronicle. Okay, let's see. Ben Fong Torres, this is his column, came out Thursday. Heather Haman, the tele and radiogenic producer. Wow. You both tele and radiogenic. Producer of Dr. Dean Adele's syndicated show until he stopped it back in 2010 is back in the producer's seat. She teamed with Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Between gigs, Haman worked at KGO in sales and as a traffic reporter. That's not exactly between gigs. That's a different gig. Laporte, who's been dispensing news, advice, and opinions about all things techie since 1991 on KNBR, KSFO, and KGO, is heard on 184 stations. KKSF, 9, 10 a.m., Sundays from 3 to 6 p.m., and can be seen on the internet. <laughs> TV. Officer Vic is at KKSF. Hey, Officer Vic! Yes, this is actually a big story. We are going to be on iHeartRadio Talk. Do, 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 do. Yes. At least I'm told so. Krasny's 20 years at KQD. He's still there, huh? It's the nation's most listened to locally produced public talk radio show. <laughs> Krasny has not been inducted in the Bay Area Radio Hall of Fame. Well, I feel better then. Nice to see BFT. Thank you. And you did that, didn't you? You did that for me. Oh, sorry. I potted you down. <laughs> I've been sitting here yelling at you. <laughs> hey, Leo. Um, what was I going to say? Oh, I also wanted you to see the pictures of your old friends and coworkers from last night. Oh, where's Cam that? Cam and Cammy. Oh, is that whatnot. also on Facebook? Yeah. I always oh, should have tagged you. I guess I didn't tag you. Yeah, I would have known. Unfair, unfair. Or just go to oh, my page. Oh, look it. Kevin Rose is one of 79, America's 79 top geeks. See, I should I should watch Facebook more often. A little bit. Yeah. Uh, America's top geeks at the Web Summit. There's Paul Thrott. There's, oh, God, Steve Jobs. Do not go see that movie. Ashton <laughs> Kusher. Ugh. <laughs> Ugh. Well, I shouldn't really probably read my Facebook. Cammy's on. kid's going off to college. I know. Can you believe that? That's frightening. How do people get that I, old that fast? It's unbelievable. So is mine. <laughs> Anyway, I told her people wanted her on MunchCast again, but that Monday through Friday gig gets in the way. There you go. 8888-ASK-LEO, that's the number. Go back to the phones, Leo. Okay, wait, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I don't know where I'm looking. I'm looking to the heavens. What should I do now? I should talk to Brian in Charlotte, North Carolina. Hi, Brian. Hey, Leo, long-time listener. Thank you. I got a question for you. I've been with the iPhone for ever since it's come out. Um, and after about um, on my iPhone 5, after it haven't replaced five times. Oh, wow. Android. Five yeah. times. That's, yeah. I have to say, in, in all, uh, <laughs> it, for in, in defense of Apple, that's unusual. I I yeah, got the, I I still have my yeah. iPhone five and it hasn't failed. I, I know lots of people. So you, I don't know why you've had such bad luck. That's terrible. But so you're thinking yeah. I, you're thinking maybe I don't want to wait to find out what Apple does. You know, September tenth, three weeks from now, they're going to announce a new iPhone. Maybe you want to wait for that. No. No, I was thinking about switching to the Motorola X. I wanted to get your opinion oh. on the Motorola X. Love it. Now, I think it's actually a very good choice for an iPhone user. It's a good introduction to Android for a few reasons. One, it's v it's very pure Android. Uh, it doesn't have a lot of uh, customizations. You know, uh, Samsung's lately really added so much stuff, so much icing to the Android cake that you can hardly see the cake. Um, HTC as well. But the, but the Moto X, because Google owns Motorola now, is very sweet, very pure. Uh, it's it feels nice in the hand. I think anybody who's used to the uh, smaller four inch screen will feel comfortable at the four point seven inch size. It is roughly the same dots per inch as the uh, iPhone five, so you don't have to worry about losing your retinas display. It's a, it's the same kind of uh, display. It's ten dots per inch less, not much. Um, and I think that there are features. You know, do you use Siri? No, not really. No, nobody does because. 
And, yeah. and I think the same thing. Google, arguably, Google now is better, but not not so much better that it's reliable enough that you could use it every time. So, okay. I was I had a dream about using Google now. I was <laughs> last night. I was trying to find out how many Kmart stores there were, and the thing wouldn't work for me. And it, you know, it was really a little too much, a little too close to the belt. Although I did, the first thing I did when I got up is I said, okay, Google now, how many Kmart locations are there? And, uh, and it, actually, it actually found it right away. Uh, in fact, it, I just did it, and there are 1,307 Kmart locations. Don't ask me why I was dreaming about how many Kmart locations there are. I have no idea. The, the, <laughs> the inner mind is a very strange thing. But uh, um, I think you'll like it. It's it's clean it's simple tell me what apps you use the most that would be the only issue there's some games for instance i mentioned plants vs zombies 2 it's not out yet in android it's only out on iphone uh but dots which is a very popular uh, iphone game is out just came out on android so there aren't that many things that you can't get on android but what are your what are, what are the apps you really use basically facebook Okay. Twitter, um, okay. and then podcasts that's about yeah. it yeah in fact uh, you'll want to use dog catcher which is a very nice Android podcast client, probably the best I've ever used. Uh, there are many choices. Okay. That's the one I use. I think you're gonna. I yeah, I think you're gonna like the Moto X. You're gonna like the customizability. Are you on AT and T? I'm on Verizon, but Verizon. I'm switching to either AT and T or, or T Mobile. Okay, so uh, AT and T's getting the Moto X August 23rd in five days. Uh, Verizon hasn't announced, but it's my understanding. I've read somewhere that it's August 29th. So. You know, both of them getting it by the end of the month. The difference is AT&T will have the customizer, which is really interesting. You can go online. By the way, the Moto X is the only smartphone made in the USA, or assembled anyway in the USA. I like that. They bought a Texas plant, and they're building them there. And because it's in the USA, you can customize it and get it within four days. They have a variety of colors, uh, accent colors. You can change the startup screen. You can have it engraved. Uh, all at no extra cost. I think that's nice. So yeah, I would for I think for an iPhone user that is probably the best Android phone choice. All right. Thanks. All right, thanks. thanks for the call. I appreciate it. I'm sorry you've had such trouble with the iPhone five. I do have to say I don't think that's common. And the good news is Apple's very good about replacing these things. I mean I'm sure he just brought it in and gave him a new one, gave him a new one. But why are they dying so fast? It was a comp. Have you ever done? Let me ask you, Heather. Have you ever done math in your dreams? Oh, wow. That's an interesting question. I in my daydreams, yeah. Yeah, but no, I've never done them in my dreams. And I was doing, I don't. I woke up and I was, remember Jeff Needles, our little uh, intern oh. that we had who was like this business kid. <laughs> and for, he was saying, why does Kmart uh, do sponsored announcements in the store? And I said, well, Jeff, do the math. And mm -hmm. I literally, in my dream, I'm saying, imagine they do 50 a day. They charge a buck each. That's $50 a day per store. How many stores are there? Now I I tried I asked uh, Google now in my dream oh how my many gosh. Kmart's there were but I didn't get an answer back so I said well I, I don't know maybe there's twenty thousand that was a big mistake there weren't <laughs> but I, I calculated my dream that means they're making one hundred fifty million dollars a year and I was my, the math was correct we need to keep your brain in a jar <laughs> after you pass and study it that's very interesting I don't understand it I I've never done that ever. That is so interesting. What I do is I always, I add numbers on license plates or wherever I see them. You I do just, that? I calculate them in my head. Oh, so you have weird? a math mind too. Ugh, I wonder mom. what that all, say no. No? Well, no, but if you're doing, if you're doing like addition on license plates, there's something going on. Yeah. Something going on. I don't yeah. know what it is. Well, anyway, uh, Google now failed me in my dreams, but just now it worked. So, <laughs> but that's, this is matters. really the truth about both Siri and Google now. Uh, in general, the dictation is not reliable enough. Google Now is, I think, more accurate and more reliable. Siri, I get all the time. Sorry, the network's down. I can't help you. Usually after dictating a paragraph, which is very frustrating, you know. But uh, so Google's a little more reliable than that. I do dictate text messages and emails all the time on both platforms. I think that's great. Um, and uh, there are some other things that make the Moto X kind of a compelling phone. One of the things I really like, and I expect to see this in a lot of phones. So one of the things they did, Motorola did, is they, they designed a specialized chipset. They call it the X8 that has two chips that can, ver without using much power, just sipping on power, watch what's going on. So it's kind of a, it's a phone that without being on, you know, without the screen being on, is situationally aware. And 
That means it can listen for you. You can say, okay, Google now, and it'll wake up, Oops, as it just did. I <laughs> should be careful saying that. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Leo. Uh, and then the other thing, the other thing you can do uh, with it is you can say, hey, uh, when I'm within range of this Bluetooth or that Bluetooth, like the one in the car, one in my computer here, uh, unlock yourself. These are safe places. You can be unlocked when, it, when you're in Bluetooth range. And that's nice because the wake up thing doesn't work when it's uh, when it's locked. So they're also selling these little clips. They're going to sell these little clips that you can swipe or put or put it on that will make it unlocked. So that's kind of a clever idea. Um, I like this phone. It also is the uh, really interesting. And this is something that I think that there's even uh, apps in the Android store that'll do this. But you can uh, when it's in your pocket, you know, you can. Pull it out of your. It could be off in your pocket. You pull out of your pocket and you twist your wrist three times, and it wakes up the phone, the uh, camera, so you can take a picture right away. And you just tap it to take a picture. So it's a very fast way to take a very bad picture. That's horrible. Eighty-eight, eighty-eight. Uh, ask Leo. Uh, and battery life's excellent on the Moto X. It's as good as the iPhone five. One thing Apple's done very well um, is maximize battery life. The rumors on the new iPhone. You know, and I got to say, there are, they're just rumors. We'll know September 10th. But the rumors of the new iPhone include um, improved battery life. That's great. I think th uh, that is something that uh, these companies kind of underestimate or have in the past underestimated the importance of. And Apple and now Motorola are clearly paying a lot of attention and realize that's a big selling point. If you can, I, you know, get me 18 hours and I'll be happy. There's also a rumor, I'm not sure I credit it, that there will be a fingerprint reader in the next iPhone. Well, we'll find out. September 10th. Not a bigger display, no. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. <sighs> you know why I think Siri works better? Fewer and fewer people are using it. Ah. Ah. Well, we built the tech guy labs. We chose to and you know what? Google Now is working worse as more and more people are using it. <laughs> It's really all about, uh, uh, you know, having enough server support and all that. Ready for lunch? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I am always ready for lunch. Uh, I saw somebody show me the soups. James showed me the soups, but I forgot. I forgot. Let me have a salad, please. That would be healthful. I'm going to try to be healthful. Healthful. And I am going to get the wooden back. They, uh. I asked, I said to Guy, I said, can you please, how do I get a wooden back? And he said, I'm looking into it. Apparently the wooden back's not going to be available till uh, later this year, but I want a wooden phone so bad. <laughs> the Nexus 4, I would say the Moto X is a reasonable successor to the Nexus floor. It misses a few things. Um, the screen is similar. It's OLED, not IPS, but it's similar. Um... It doesn't have uh, wireless charging, which I really like, but it is a smaller, I like it's a smaller in the hand. It's much more compact in the hand. And um, uh, it's pretty much almost a, a pure Google experience. The camera's about as bad as the Nexus 4, maybe a little bit better. Not wooden case, I have a wooden case. I mean a wooden phone, there's a difference. Yeah, yeah, we haven't had any trouble with our Nexus Sevens. Oh, you know, there's a guy who comes in here, this local, who keeps coming in here trying to get me to talk about how Wi-Fi is killing kids, and I just throw him out. I take him by the scruff of his neck and the and his belt, and I throw him out. Who said that? Apparently, KFI had a show last night about how Wi-Fi and smart meters are killing people. No. Oh, my God. It's not true, folks. Adele dispelled those rumors before I know. retired it's like three it's years ago. It's ancient. I know. Break. I asked, I, I asked the guy, I said, how do you feel about vaccines? He said, oh, I believe in them. I said, well, that's a relief. Mm. Jeez Louise. Stunning. Yeah. Uh, he, he's, he keeps wanting me to, you know, he, he brought me a ton of material. I said, there's no scientific support, so he brings me a bunch of websites. I said, oh, yeah, that's, oh, God. that's convincing. Yeah, well, Jenny McCarthy has a website, too. What does that tell yeah. you? <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, somebody's trying to get me into this game, but I don't even oh, know. Oh, is that the original? That's the original Plants vs. Zombies. It's a cute zombie. <sighs> oh, it's really fun. It's so addictive. So addictive. You will not. I just repel. Addiction. I don't know. Do you play games on your... Uh... 
No. No. I just I don't. Sh- don't get. Don't start. Then. I know. It's a time well, I'm sink. like, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care. And then I see people who I, you know, feel are normal and somewhat akin to me get sucked into Candy Crush or something like yeah, that. Yeah. Don't like, start oh God, that one. It's another. It. It's a and very I'm addictive. Like, they're very addictive. Well, because... I don't have an addictive personality, though. Yeah. Yeah, I'm me neither. Like but what on. happens is these games are very well... <laughs> these guys have learned how to design games that... Suck you in. Totally play to, you know, uh, human addictive needs. The only thing I'm addicted to is, like, John Oliver on The Daily Show. I'm addicted to him, too. <laughs> you know, he has a podcast. I gotta listen you to it. gotta him. listen to The Daily Bugle. It's hysterical. That's what it's called? The Daily Bugle. What is it about him? I, like, right after he took over for Jon Stewart, I had a um, <coughs> SEX dream about him. Oh. <laughs> what the what? I bet he's <laughs> I, he's kind of cute. In a, yeah, weird way. He's attractive. <laughs> you know what? I've realized women, I think, you could correct me if I'm wrong, and it's not all true of all women, but often being funny is uh, one of the higher rated attributes versus oh, God, attractiveness. Yeah. If you're funny... I mean, I look at people like Louis Black, who has the hottest girlfriend I've ever seen in my life. Oh, is that right? And he's not an attractive man. He is weird in those fingers. <laughs> Every comedian has a gorgeous girlfriend. Huh. Okay, we're going to stop this line of thought right now. <laughs> ah, the 80s. What a decade. Leo Laporte, the tech guy, 8888, ask Leo. Nathan Straten, our uh, musical director. It's good to have you back, Nathan. <laughs> Let's go back to the phones. Uh, Steve is in uh, La Habra, California, our next caller. Hi, Steve. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hey, thank you for taking my call. <clears throat> I have a question. Yes, sir. Um, I have a patent that was published. It's a high-tech patent. I just drove all the way to Palo Alto to meet with the uh, folks at the AT&T Foundry, um, and I can't be driving all over the country. Is there a place like Tech Writers get together online someplace where I could put this out so that they could write about it, and then the industry finds out? Uh, well, okay, so uh, no, not that I know of. Um, we, we tech writers do sometimes uh, follow each other on Facebook or Google+. Plus. I'd go to Google+, Plus for sure. Um, you might also uh, take a look at, um, I mean, PR Newswire, which will charge you, will release press releases, and they send them to most of the tech writers. Uh, but it's expensive. What is your intent? You want to let people know this patent exists? Yeah, so I can. It's a new type of cell phone, um, and I won't. You know, now I'm looking at an appointment with the people down in Dallas that run Samsung. Are you trying to find somebody to manufacture it? Uh, to take over, you know, to license out the patent. Uh huh. Well, I. Uh, you know, I don't. Tech writers are not going to write about it. I can tell you that right now because it's a. It's complicated and b patents especially technology patents right now are a minefield because there are a lot of people uh, frankly you sound like one they're called non-practicing entities they're people who have it's so easy to get a patent and you look at some of these patents out there they're absurd they're they're obvious they're trivial but the patent office uh, nevertheless has granted them and then these companies who never intend to make or use this patent go around trying to get licenses, and if failing that, we'll sue. These are, they're, in the common parlance, they're called patent trolls. Uh, in the patent world, they're called, uh, in a less <laughs> inflammatory fashion, non-practicing entities, or NPEs. It's because they never intended to make anything. So the reason for patents existing, and it goes back to our founding fathers, and uh, the very earliest days of this country, the patent system was created to further the arts and sciences. And it was a very clever idea. They said, in order to take something that you've invented and make it public so that everybody can benefit from it, we're going to give you exclusive license to it for a period of, I think it was originally 12 years, is now, depending on the patent, 21 years. We're going to give you, exclu- it doesn't matter how long, exclusive license to it for a limited period of time. At that point, and in order to get that license, you have to reveal publicly how you do this thing, make this drug, build this machine. And in order to uh, get the patent and get the exclusive license, you publish all the details, and then after the patent expires, anybody can make it. We all benefit. The uh, uh, pharmacy is a, Pharmacology is a great example. 
So a pill like Viagra uh, is expensive to develop. The company that makes it uh, puts a lot of money into it. And they're granted a patent and the right to make it exclusively for a certain number of years, at which point it becomes public and the generics come out. And I think in many cases, uh, when you buy, uh, you know, go to the doctor, they'll prescribe a generic because it's, it's exactly the same because the patent reveals the manufacturing process. But the company, Pfizer or Bayer or whoever, got to, you know, capitalize on it for enough time so they could amortize the cost to incent them to make it in the first place. You're not going to do the research making something uh, if you can't make money off of it. Now, there's, there's two ways to go. Some companies uh, use trade secrets. They say, ah, oh, we don't want to ever publish this. Coca-Cola never patented the recipe for Coca-Cola because to do so, they would have had to reveal it and it would have become public after a certain period of time. So they made it a trade secret. And we don't, you know, you can, nobody else can make Coke, right? Only Coke can make Coke because nobody knows that secret recipe. So patents, I think, are a very clever way of getting stuff out. Now, uh, in the last few years, the patent office has started to approve software patents. And this is much more controversial because nothing's being made. There's no machine. There's no prototype. There's no thing to manufacture. It's just software. And things like one-click purchasing this is a very famous patent that Amazon owns. The idea that you can go to a website, click once, and it's, it's yours. Man, that's worth a lot of money, isn't it, to Amazon? So they patented it. And they've been suing people who do the same thing. And there's quite a bit of argument whether that's something that's trivial, obvious, and shouldn't be patented. It's not a machine. It's not a new way of doing things. A lot of people think software patents are a bad idea. But what's really made it a bad idea is the number of people who are going around who never made anything, never intended to make anything, but just thought up as many things as they could, went to the patent office, got patents, and now are suing companies, making millions and really putting a, uh, a real dent in innovation. So many companies now are engaged, embroiled in these phony patent lawsuits. It's estimated billions of dollars every year lost completely to court costs to defend, you know, yourself against a patent troll, a non-practicing entity. So it sounds to me, caller, like that's what you are, <laughs> to be honest. You don't, you've thought of something, you went, you got a patent for it, you never intended to make it. Now you're going around and you want to hold up companies and say, hey, I want some money for this. I thought of it. You're using it. But yeah, but they made it. They made it. You never made it. Uh, so I don't expect you to get much support from the tech writing community. We're not real fans of that. Uh, Adam in Bakersfield, California. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hi, Adam. How you doing, sir? I uh, love your show. Uh, Long-time listener. Um, I had a question about... I had a question about, uh, I bought a new Samsung Galaxy Note 8.0, and uh, I remember that a few years ago, you talked about when you when someone buys a new uh, computer, they can go to a website, and this website will help them to delete all the preloaded programs. Yeah, the this was for Windows. Yes. PC, uh, PC Decrapifier, it was called, if you'll excuse my <laughs> French. Um, and it's a great idea. Yeah, is there something like that? for my Samsung Galaxy no. Note 8. Well, yes and no. There's no automated tool because, as you've probably already noticed, you can't uninstall those programs, can't you? It just says get info. It doesn't say uninstall. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. So in order to remove stuff from uh, an a Android device, you first have to get root privileges. You have to oh, root the device. And then that, and it's easy to do. It's generally, if you follow the instructions very carefully... If you make a mistake, you can do something called brick your system and make it unusable. So you got to be very careful. But if you follow the instructions by the letter, especially an older device like your Note, uh, yeah. you'll be able to root it. And then you can just uninstall whatever you don't want. Yeah, I'm just having a hard time going through all these apps, these preloaded apps. I agree. I don't know why they do this. Uh, and Samsung's only gotten worse. You should look at the Galaxy S4. There's like four stupid games I don't even want on there. What? <laughs> and, and it's ironic because the Galaxy S4 ships with 16 gigs of memory. It doesn't have a lot of memory, and, and more than 12 of them are taken up by this crap. Wow. Wow. So, um, I, you know, I agree. Here's the thing. Uh, you could search for root and the name of your device or go to xda-developers.com and look up your device. And it's usually very simple, especially on older stuff, to uh, root it and then delete what you don't want. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Mm, so...
It's a great story. You know, I've looked in almost every business email. Um, and, and what's really sad is the company that was behind the patent that Carbonite beat is Intellectual Ventures, which was founded by Nathan Mirvold, who used to be chief scientist at Microsoft, and a guy who is a millionaire, multi, multi, multi millionaire. And he founded, he left Microsoft, retired, and founded this company to collect, to become basically the world's largest patent troll. Um, so I do recommend the uh, this American Life. They did two on patent trolls, and this one that came out this this uh, this um, year. Um, let me see what the patent was. What our lawyers were saying is, it's going to cost us millions of dollars more to take this to trial, and if we lose, we're really screwed," said David Friend of Carbonite. And I was sort of like, "Well, because we're not in violation of their patents, why should we pay them anything?" Not even a nickel. And this is what happens. The trolls come to you and say, we'll, we'll license you. Then this is what this guy wanted to do. Wanted to go to Samsung and say, hey, I patented something I never made, never did anything with. But I thought it up, and you're using it, and I want you to give me money. And Samsung, if they say no, then they risk being sued by the guy. And if you lose the lawsuit, not only will you end up having to pay that license fee, but you'll also have to pay damages in some cases so it can add up to a lot of money on the other hand fighting it if the patent troll's smart and they're not all smart but if the patent troll's smart he'll ask for an amount of money that's less than fighting it fighting it costs a million two million dollars so if he asks for half a million he's going to get it unless you get somebody like david friend at carbonite who said the hell with that <laughs> that that's not going to happen so he fought it and won but he took a big risk and he spent a lot of money as a businessman, he said, I'm put in a situation where my board is saying you should settle. My lawyers are saying you should settle. Everyone else is settling. He said, I felt like we were being extorted. So he fought it, and thank goodness he won. And, and I really just think that's fabulous. Um, they did the right thing. There are other cases of companies fighting, but very few. Uh, you know, unfortunately, the economics of fighting are so horrible uh, and on the other hand, there are legitimate patent lawsuits. It's not that, you know, the guy who invented intermittent windshield wipers really did get ripped off by Ford. And he was right to fight it. Um, but it's so easy, especially with software, to say, hey, let me think of something. Oh, okay, yeah, one plus one equals two. Let me just patent that in case. And they write them intentionally, extremely broadly. I don't know how they're getting them through the patent office. Except that, I, well, I kind of do, because the patent office doesn't work the way people think it does. They really expect the courts to settle these patents. So in, they, the, in case of doubt, they just award the patent and say, well, they'll work it out in court. So it, they create these very, if you read these patents, they're incredibly broad with the intent. The broader, the better, because the intent is let's, we want to sue as many people as possible. Oh, and by the way, it's cheap to sue. It's a couple hundred bucks. And it's millions to defend because you have to, and I know a little bit about this, unfortunately. You have to uh, depose people and you have to, um, you know, hire expensive law firms. And often these suits don't take place in your jurisdiction. There wouldn't be, you know, in Boston, it's usually in East Texas. Uh, because there's a judge or two there who are very much uh, pro-patent trolls. And the juries there are very much anti-big company. And so when a seemingly small company sues a big company for ripping it off they often uh, are kind of in favor of that it's really ugly yeah and by the way it practically killed the guy who did the intermittent windshield wipers <laughs> it took his whole life to get that money don't get my salad James Yeah, rounded corn. But see, the, there's a little difference when an Apple makes a patent because they're, they're doing patents because they really, you know, when a company like Samsung or Apple has a patent, it, it's not a non-practicing entity. Yeah, Marshall, Texas. That first hour was so fast. I know, it goes fast, doesn't it? <laughs> Lightning. That was the fastest one ever. <laughs> Yeah.
That's nice, Dr. Mom. Yeah, it'd be great if you start getting the Apple and uh, all the invites for us. That'd be fabulous. I'd send you. I'll tell you how I knew. I asked him a, a question. Where do you want to go to these guys? Do you want to have them manufacture it? No, I want them to license it. That's how I knew. I mean, it's not for sure, but you have to look at it. You can always tell. It's Believe me, it's very clear when it's a patent troll. I do have a little bit of experience in this matter. Actually, more than I'd like. Who kick off, kicked off the uh, big discussion of pop? And yes, I said pop. In the chat room, everybody's As in talking soda about different pop? sodas. Because oh, they're talking about everything. patenting, because I mentioned Coke. Oh, oh, oh. The trade secret versus patent. Right. It's pop. <laughs> do you where did you grow up in Texas? Where'd you pop grow up? Is Midwest. Pop is Midwest. There's a map, you know. <laughs> Let me see if I can find them. I have seen that. The soda nomenclature map. I remember when we were little and going to school in the suburbs of Chicago, some kid moved from the East Coast and was like, blah 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 soda and we were like, What, what is the soda? hell is he talking about? Let's go have a soda. <laughs> so here's the map. Mm -hmm. Blue is soda. Yellow is pop. And then everybody Pink else says Coke. Coke. Yeah. Yeah. To mean everything. And then there's also other. I love that. That's amazing. <laughs> pop versus soda dot com. It's just so interesting. <laughs> Isn't that bizarre? Alaska's very confused. <laughs> <laughs> Refreshment, yes. A refreshing beverage, an adult beverage. The kind that makes you burp. Well, hey, 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 how are you today? Leo Laporte here, the tech guy. Time to talk about tech, computers, cell phones, home theater. Our digital photographer, Chris Marquardt, joins us. A little photographic myth busting at the bottom of the hour, 33 and a third after the hour. We did that intentionally, you know, at, uh, at, this, at this very show. 8888-ASK-LEO. That's my uh, phone number. If you have a question, a comment, a suggestion, our website is Labs. Dot com. You can go there and find answers to all the questions. You can also uh, find all the links we talk about. We'll even uh, give you a chance to comment. So if you have a, you know, hey, you're full of it. That's not a patent troll. You can comment there as well. Love it if you do. 8888-ASK-LEO. That's the primary place uh, to go. So we're going to move on. Where do you, who do you, what do you, <laughs> why do you... Hello, Heather Hammond. Who should hey, I talk Leo. to next? Let's talk to Carl in Burbank. Hello, Carl in Burbank. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Oh, I had Heather on and not you, Carl. Go ahead. Sorry. <laughs> Hi, Carl. What can I do for you? Hi, Leo. Uh, like your show a lot. Um, I'm interested in buying an iPad, a Kindle, or a tablet, and the purpose for this is um, I'm starting to play music, and I want to be able to put my iTunes account on it download uh, sheet music and uh, other musical type apps. There's really no question at all when it comes to that because, well, first of all, you said the word iTunes and only Apple's devices support iTunes that way. But more importantly, music. The Because the iPad really has been out for the longest and is the king of the hill in this regard, there are by far more music apps for, including transcription apps for the iPad than all the others combined. 
So if, if music is your goal, there you just have to get an iPad. Now, there will be a new iPad coming out in October. I'm, I'm certain of that. So if you can wait a month or two. Okay. Okay. Very good, because I wasn't sure if you could put iTunes onto Kindle or anything like well, that. Well, you... Uh, Here's what you can do. You can't put iTunes on anything but an Apple device. Apple, you know, iPads come with iTunes. Uh, but you can put something like Double Twist, which is an, uh, a, a music playing program, uh, on your computer and on your Android tablet, and it will sync up. It'll play the music. If the music is copy protected, it won't play. But uh, uncopy, and, and nothing on iTunes has been copy protected for some years now. Uh, that music will play just fine. So it's if it's just getting the music that you have on your desktop onto your tablet, you can use anything. It's the music programs where the iPad really is the only choice. Okay. Great, Leo. Thank you very much. You're welcome. And, you know, there isn't so much difference between a Kindle and an Android device and an iPad that I would say, oh, don't, you know, work extra hard to use the Kindle. Not by any means. In fact, the Kindle is the least powerful of the bunch because Amazon really is just making a device that is a portal to Amazon's properties, to buying Amazon stuff, to reading Amazon books, you know, the e-books, to playing Amazon music and and uh, and uh, watching Amazon TV and, and movies. That's that's really what the Kindle is. It's 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 designed to be that, and that's why it's so inexpensive. Now, the the oddball out, and by the way, my favorite tablet in the market today is the Nexus 7 from Google. It's so inexpensive, 229 bucks for the same uh, device that, you know, it's it's close to an iPad mini. So Apple charges about 110 bucks more for the same thing. A little bit different screen configuration. The iPad mini's more square. That's another reason why it's better for music. It's more, it's the right aspect ratio for sheet music. Um, but boy, yeah, you know, the Nexus 7 is a lot less expensive. And if you're not doing music, there are things that it's better at or is good at certainly a better screen than the iPad mini. But if you're doing music, it's really straightforward. There's there's no second best. It's it's iPad and that's it. Dale in Palmdale, California. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hi, Dale. Hi, how you doing, Leo? I'm well. How are you? Not too bad. Um, I'm trying to uh, figure out a uh, problem that I'm having. I've had a, a sling box for quite a while, and I absolutely love it. But the, here just recently... Um, for whatever reason, I did an update on my phone because I watch it on my phone. And for whatever reason, I'm having to unplug my HDMI wire in order for it to work. Otherwise, I, I don't get the signal. Yeah, I don't know. It sounds like... And so I if the HDMI is plugged in, it, it, it won't work? Right. It, with the H and, and I called up Sling, and they, they're blaming it on DirecTV. And I called what? up DirecTV and DirecTV's... <laughs> That, well, they're saying that it, it it has something to do with the HDCP. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, that's what it is. You're right. I blame DirecTV. But at so, the same time, I just, I've been using it for years, and all of a sudden... Well, they may have... Impl HDCP is copy protection. Right, I know what I'd that have is. copy protection. Well, anytime you have the word copy protection, you know what that really means is you're not going to be able to do some of the things you want to do. And it may be that the the new DirecTV, you know, suddenly implemented it where they didn't before. I would check the I would make sure you have a HDCP compliant cable, HDMI 1.4. Um, but I think I have to say I have to this if 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 the Sling folks say it's the DirecTV box, they probably have seen this before. Yeah, they're, they're, they said to go to their website and, and check their yeah. FAQs, and I went there and looked at that, and all I saw in there was a bunch of people saying the same thing I was saying, is that I, I can't use it no more. Well, that's... <laughs> that's that doesn't do me so like So that that tells you is, uh, at least, it's not something broken on the sling. That right. it is something, and I think it is, it's something uh, that they must have turned on on the DirecTV uh, box. Yeah. Uh, can I ask you one real quick question? Uh, that's so sad, yeah. Yeah, it's in regards to the uh, Samsung Galaxy Note 3. When uh, Have you heard any word on when it's coming out and what's the word on it? Uh, September 4th, they're going to announce it. Uh, it's our best guess that they will have it available within three weeks. That's kind of the norm yeah. uh, nowadays. Uh, and I don't know which carriers will have it. You, certainly AT&T, which had the Note 2. Uh, I'm yeah. hopeful that Verizon and the others will also carry it. Nowadays... Samsung and and is putting it on every carrier, and I wouldn't, you know, it's, it's, they don't all do it at once. Maybe because they got to put their little carrier. I, I want to say a word I can't. Okay. They want to market <laughs> with their little their little carrier markings. 
to let you know it's theirs. But uh, that takes a little while. But as soon as as soon as they do that, uh, I would bet you the uh, Galaxy S, the, the Note Three, will be available uh, on on all carriers. You like the big screens? Yeah. Well, that's the, well. The main reason why I like the big screen is because I'm going to be using the the uh, sling box to watch it. it. The, yeah. The yeah. bigger the screen, the better it looks. Yeah, you're right. Uh, I was going to go with the S4, but the S4 because I mean, it's got the 1080p, but it has a smaller screen. But I'm figuring that the Note 3 will probably have the 1080p also, and it'll probably have just as many features, if not more, than the, the S4. It'll be very much like a, an S4 blown up, is my understanding, yeah. Yeah, cool. Okay, well, all thank right. you, Leo. Appreciate You're welcome. all the help. Thanks for the call. Day. Yeah. Uh, a lot of interest in the in the Samsung uh, Note. Uh, I loved the Note 2. It was a big phone. This one's going to be even bigger. but And that really, to me, speaks to the fact that we don't really use it as a phone that much. Because you look kind of silly holding up a big slab to your ear, but it's not. But you don't do it that often. Or if you do, maybe you use a wire, wired hands headset or uh, Bluetooth. But more, what we're using them for is computers. So a bigger screen makes a lot of sense. You want to see more. Um, what I've read on the Note Three is not encouraging. It sounds like it isn't there. It's not a big uh, bump in spec. That that will be that that may not be the fastest thing ever. But, you know, we won't know till September 4th. And that's not so far off. So you can find out that. Boy, is this going to be a big September and October. Lots of announcements. We know the iPhone, uh, five, I think it's going to be called the 5S, whatever. The next iPhone will be announced September 10th. Uh, IFA, the big teleconference, uh, you know, mobile phone conference is coming up in Barcelona uh, September uh, 5th. So there'll be a number of announcements there. I expect some announcements from Nokia. Um, Samsung, HTC, I think they're going to announce the HTC One, um, what do they call it, Mega, the big screen HTC One. <laughs> uh, There's quite a bit of uh, excitement going on. This is this is a great area, you know. This is used to be computers where it was uh, all happening. Now it's in mobile devices. 88, did I say Berlin, Barcelona? Yeah, that's where he will be. 88, 88, ask Leo, Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Did I say Berlin? Barcelona. Now, the service plan always costs the same, regardless. IFA's in Berlin, not Barcelona. Oh, this time of year, it seems like everyone's spending time right. away from the office. IFA's in Berlin, Mobile World Congress is in Barcelona. It's all over there. For us Americans, it's all just over there. Thank you, Beatmaster. Beatmaster's over there. That's how come I know. No, IFA's in Berlin. Mobile World Congress is in Barcelona. <laughs> it's just over there, Estan. <laughs> I'll fix it later. I'll fix it in post. <laughs> hey, that's why live is bad. You say things and... Uh, and I'm an old man, so I make a lot of mistakes now. My brain is just... But I can do math in my sleep, which is pretty good. Ta-da. I've never done that before. Your skill set's just changing. And Morning. I checked my math when I woke up, and I said, that was right. <laughs> I do something different in my brain. What do you do? So I'm finishing up Nikon's Trilogy Peter Hamilton. I'm going back to that. I wake up saying, wait a minute, I was reading the story. Oh, wow. Making it up. John Slanina reads novels in his sleep, well, the and then he makes up what's happening. Well, obviously I'm making it up because... Because you haven't read it yet. It's pretty weird. Wow. I think I might have done that. Yeah, if you, yeah, yeah, because, yeah. Yeah. I've done, I've had dreams of fixing computers, many of those. <laughs> I don't, not lately. I haven't fixed a computer in a while. Uh, radio, of course. Everybody in radio has radio. Do you ever have radio dreams? I only have radio nightmares. Yeah, they're all nightmares. So what are you? Your, know what do you have is, in your right? nightmares? We should. Well, write mine down is the songs. The songs and... running out. Yep. And I and I'm and I'm uh, getting tangled up in my headphones, <laughs> and I can't push the buttons. <laughs> I can't. And the see song's it's ending right now. And yeah, so I'm having that dream. Me. I hate it. Um, That's funny. You have I'm that dream too. Stacking huh? carts. Yeah. And I'm not getting there in time. Yeah. And there's going to be dead air. It's yeah. Just all there's going to be dead, dead air. air nightmare. Yeah. 
which is a great rhyme. Yeah. Maybe it's a good name for a band. Dead Air Nightmare. Oh! Start Maybe that band. Our, you Cam, you Cammy, well, that's, Kim. That's the Ladies name and of our record, and it's all empty. It's Dead Air. <laughs> How artsy would that be? <laughs> it wouldn't be just dead air. It'd be the scent of the needle at the last track of a record. There you go. Oh. Perfect. Hey, I have to say hi to my friend Michael in New York. Hey, Thanks Michael. Not it's Michael Lynn, Michael. Michael Weehold, yeah. Michael Weehold. These in truths to be self-evident. <laughs> He, um, his microphone on his iPhone wasn't working, so he's getting an iPhone 5, and I was like, can't you wait a little bit? Yeah, just wait, really. Well, I guess he can't, though. I yeah, mean, what are you going to do? It'd be a long time. Because it's our cellulator, and you need it for right. everything. You need it for everything. <laughs> cellulator. God, that's a good name. <sighs> hmm. All right. Screen this call. Go ahead. Do some real work for once. <laughs> So that's a good Christmas gift. Next is seven. It's not true, uh, Drone Revolution. I think it's a common misconception. I can get out of the Apple ecosystem anytime I want to. <laughs> Everybody, get on the ground. Do the Rock Lobster, Leo Laporte, the tech guy. It is the best party song ever. I think you're right, Aaron B. Aaron B. in our chat room. That's a good place to go. Hang out with the smart kids, the cool kids, the wiseacres, the kids in the back of the class. We got them all. Kids throwing spitballs. It's, uh, it's, uh, you can get there by going to the website, techguylabs.com. I'm Leo Laporte, the tech guy, and uh, we're taking your calls at 8888-ASK-LEO. Ah! I can't do, I can't, can you do that? Oh, not at all. No, but I can do the lobster dance. Because it involves a lot of lying down. I'm very good at that. <laughs> I am superior at dancing lying on the floor on the ground. And flailing. Flailing. <laughs> I can do that. <laughs> Kate Pearson voice. <laughs> That's how does it? Ah, ah. Uh, Bill in Culver City is really wondering why he called the show right now. <laughs> Hi, Bill Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hello, Leo. Hey, thank you so much for taking my call. Well, thanks for calling. I appreciate it. Well, I've been listening to you for a long time, but this is the first time I've really needed your help because I'm dealing with my son, who is <laughs> just becoming a senior in high school. <laughs> I've been there. I'm one year ahead of you, okay? <laughs> <laughs> He's got a MacBook Pro that he bought in 2009. Awesome. But he says it's not running very fast anymore, and it's full, and he wants to get a new one. Of course he, he does. Of course. And he wants to get a new one with a solid-state drive in it. Yes. And I can't really find any other PCs or anything that comes with a solid-state drive. Almost all laptops, PC or Mac now, do come with solid-state oh. drives, especially if you get the PC category, the Ultrabook. Ultrabook's uh, generally solid-state. And really, you do want to... Nowadays, I don't buy a computer desktop or laptop that doesn't have a solid state drive. It makes such a difference in performance. Oh, yeah. Uh, so here's my question. Can we upgrade his current MacBook Pro? Oh, yeah. By putting in a solid state drive? Here's his real concern. His real concern is he knows somebody who has one that died after five years and he's already had it for a while. Well, laptops don't last as long as desktops because they're, especially with high school kids, thrown around a little bit and so forth. Uh, it's four years old. That's about right. Okay. Um, I wouldn't expect it to go a lot lo lo longer than that. The issue about putting an SSD in there, you can because SSDs have SATA interfaces, right. but you won't get the benefit of the speed on an SSD if it's SATA 1, the original SATA interface. And I'd have to look up that MacBook uh -huh. Pro to see because it, it okay. literally the drive is faster than the interface. Right. So the first place I go is MacSales.com. It's called Other World Computing. They sell solid-state drives. It's where I get all my aftermarket solid-state drives for Macintoshes. Uh, and you can see if they have one for that model. Oh, But, but okay. my, my guess is it's, it's not gonna, you're not going to get much of the benefit because, you know, the, the solid-state drives, just for people who want to know what we're talking about, they, they're flash drives based on flash RAM, just like the stuff in your camera. Uh, and they have several advantages. Uh, the reads are really fast. Mm -hmm. Writes are faster, but not not a, not. There's they're not as fast as the reads. The reads are where you get a lot of speed. Uh, and but the negative is they cost more uh, 
per gigabyte. So oh, yeah. generally, they're smaller drives, 128 or 256 gigabytes. And you can they, get them up to almost a terabyte. Well, yeah, you can, but you'll be paying a lot of money for oh, it. Oh, yeah, I know. Now, the differential is going down fast, and uh, that's why at this point I would say it's a very good idea to get a laptop with a solid-state drive. It makes a huge, huge difference. I just don't know... If that, that I, I just, you know, find out what the SATA interface is on that laptop. If it's SATA 2 or better, I think you're all right. SATA well, 1 will be too quest, slow. The question he's really concerned about is if, if I spend all this money to upgrade it right. in a really nice solid-state drive, what's going to happen to the to the laptop in two years? Is it going to die? Well, is, I don't know. how. You know, he wants a new one. Yeah, of course. <laughs> you know, a, he wants a, a new one. Of about a thousand dollars between the two. Uh, approaches. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly right. Actually, you can get him an 11-inch MacBook Air, which would be a perfect choice for about a thousand bucks. He's looked at the Air. He'd rather have the Pro. Oh yeah, now you're talking some money. Yeah, eighteen hundred bucks. Yeah, I love I love how these kids go. No, but I need one. <laughs> yeah, I, know. I need one. Um, but it is SATA to the 2009 MacBook. Is it a MacBook Pro? Well, he said it was. If it's a, the old one. It's a third, yeah. Okay. It's, 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 if it's a MacBook Pro, it does have SATA 2. That's probably fast enough to take the benefit. I would go to other world computing and see what they can put in that particular model. Um, you know, some of the uh, older ones, it's hard, it was hard to uh, get access to the hard drive, so you want to make sure it's doable. But these are, these are really great, and I've put a number of um, uh, SSDs from other world computing into mm -hmm. not only my uh, MacBooks, but into my old Mac Pro, I put a uh, one of their uh, drives, and it made a huge difference. Okay, so the real question amounts to the fact as to whether or not his current... Yeah, and I don't know the answer to that, because it depends how good, how well he's taking care of it. I mean, uh, it could go for years. It could be on its last legs. Yeah. Impossible know. to tell. Is it? Has it had any problems up to date? No, I don't think so. He hasn't mentioned any. Yeah. It also is, uh, and uh, Cortron in the chat room is reminding us that, uh, you know, even if the laptop dies, you could take the SSD out and put it in a new one. That's true. You're, yeah. not, lo you're not losing your money. Right. Not right. Not losing the money on the SSD. You know, I would try to get it. Here's, here's a compromise that'll make everybody happy. See if you can get another year out of it and say, hey, when you go to college, you'll get a new one. Uh, maybe. <laughs> we're going to discuss it tonight. So. There's, I mean, there's a compromise you could try. That, A, gives him an incentive to uh, get through the year with this one. At that point, it will be five years old. It'll probably be worth getting a new one. Okay. And, B, it kind of gives him an incentive to go to college. Oh, he has incentive to go to college. Good, man. I like that. That's yeah. great. Yeah. And and what the, what he's doing, he's in, uh, he's in the, the world of art, so to speak. He's a musician. Oh, that's great. And he does composing and arranging and things like that. My son is the same way. He's a freshman in college uh, in the one week. Actually, Wednesday, Thursday he starts at uh, Colorado, University of Colorado. He uh, loves music, making music. He uses Logic Pro. Just got the new Logic Pro 10. Uh, and he's, he's saying this thing is incredible. It's the best ever. He loves it. And it, it works well on a laptop. He's using it on a MacBook Air, and it works very well. So. Oh, okay. Yeah. He can, I mean, what's nice is he's taking that to school, and he's going to be able to, you know, in his spare time in between studying Henry, he's going to be able to make music and, uh, and have some well, fun. Well, his studying is making music. Perfect. Yeah. Then, you know what? If that's the case... Uh, there's going to be a time when you want to get some more horsepower. Uh, oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Might as well get it now. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Yeah. Or wait a year. You know what? The new Mac Pro in a year, say, son, you get straight A's, you can get a Mac Pro in a year. Well, he's going to get him. He wants a Mac Pro now, so that's not <laughs> much. Well, you don't want the new You want to wait for the new one. And, yeah. and Ben, you don't want to get the first new one because the first of anything is always a little wonky. Yeah, I understand entirely. Yeah, but the new one is beautiful. I tell you, Logic Pro 10 on uh, what looks to be the most sleek hardware I've ever seen, the Mac Pro. It'll only set you back $5,000, but, man, it is going <laughs> to... Oh, gosh. Start saving now. You thought tuition was bad. You've seen this. The cylinder. You can go to uh, apple.com slash Mac Pro and see a very slick sales piece on it. Um, but Apple is is releasing a new Mac Pro. I think they'll announce it in October. Here's what I think the time frame is going to be. Uh, September, traditionally an iPod month. Obviously, new iPods, nobody cares. This is now, September is now the iPhone month. So we'll see, I believe, two new iPhones, the 5S and the 5C, September 10th. The following month, updates for other hardware. Probably new MacBook Pros, the new Mac Pro, new iPads too. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Ah. Uh. 
you guys, I'm buying that TV for you. I'm not buying that TV for me. I'm buying that TV for you. You think you think I'm buying that TV for me? Oh no. <laughs> You're welcome, Johnny. <laughs> You're giving me a hard time. I'm buying that TV because I want to take the bullet on the first OLED TV. Oh, he's black and white, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, I am. <laughs> Chris Marquardt, the old fat. You look like you belong in uh, Mayberry RFD. You know, I'm a photographer, and I love the black and white look. So, <laughs> Hey, Andy. He kind of even looks like Andy Griffith. That, put that's, on a a, sheriff's that's, a cultural, that's a cultural reference that I don't get. You don't get, get it? <laughs> I no. love it. So, there, um, it, it. You know, a lot of American TV shows make it uh, to Germany, but I guess, uh, I guess the Andy Griffith show did not. I don't think so. It's and, pretty American. If it did, they would have probably dubbed it in German. It would have wouldn't been horrible. Been, wouldn't have been good. It wouldn't have, would not have been good. Here he is, ladies and gentlemen, in black and white. I hear the music. That means it's time for our Kodachrome guy, Chris Marquardt, our photo expert, digital f photographer, photographer. Kodachrome in black and white. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you in black and white? Is that intentional? Yeah, of course. I mean, uh, you know, you have some guests wearing funny hats. and I, I like thought it. As a photographer, I black and white is just a very special thing. We'll in one of the in one of the next episodes I want to do a little black and white special just to talk about why it is so special and why it's why it has um it why, makes why you it look, has the look that it has and why, why it makes you feel in in a certain way. It makes you look like a TV show from the fifties. It's great. Um, well, yeah, I, I would I would have a different frame rate then, I guess. <laughs> 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 no, but to, today today I wanna I wanna pop another photography myth. And the myth awesome. is that say cheese produces the perfect smile. Oh yeah, we we do that. Uh, do they what now? Obviously, say cheese not in Germany. What do they do in Germany? They must of have. Of course, we do that. We we say, say cheese, cheese as well in English. Yes, in English, we say cheese. Sprechen, sprechen Sie cheese. So about that, yeah, but 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 it doesn't doesn't cheese. really work. You know how the results look look really cheese. artificial. Yeah, it really looks like like cheese. Say cheese. You see, it's like a it's like there's a strain. There's something strained about it. Well, and, and the other thing that I see, especially in the United States, is the one, two, three, click kind of thing, which also doesn't really work. No. because everybody you know, freezes. You know what? Exactly, because everyone has their, has their photography face. And Oof, I hate if, it. If you tell one, be natural, that is just guaranteed to just not produce a yeah, natural result. Yeah. And unless it's a professional model, right? Or t tell someone be yourself or look relaxed. It just does not work. We it all have the wrong that person in our life who, as soon as you, they know the camera's on them, they do a phony smile or they stick out their tongue. They do something. Or duck face, yeah. Duck face. And, it, and you can never get a good picture of them. Exactly. And it's just announcing to take the photo is probably one of the worst things you can do. Yeah. So here's here's how you do that. If you do a photo session with someone and you, you tell them to pose, you tell them, look, look this way, look that way, look into the light, do this, do that. You shoot between the poses. Ah. That's when people when just let, let go for, for a second, when yeah. they let their hair down, when they, when they break that wall down that they have up in front of them. Or you coax them into some form of reaction. You tell them something really silly something really stupid but something that might make them laugh or might make them go what and all of a sudden you get a real reaction all of a sudden it is real and then the other thing is be ready to shoot lots as, as something happens if you have the camera on auto uh, or rapid fire mode where it shoots several a second that's when you want to go click 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 because then the funny things or the good things happen uh, so i do that actually because there's a f good very close friend of mine uh, and you've you've actually shot her in a in a you know model situation to get headshots of her, mm -hmm. and um, as soon as she knows I'm taking a picture, it's over. Yes, she, you know. But by the way, you can you can use the one two three, but then shoot at two. One two. Don't wait till three. <laughs> so. One two three. I like it. <laughs> by the I way, like I, I went on Wikipedia to look up where, what other countries say when, when, when you say cheese. Yeah. In Japan, it's chizu. In chizu. Korea, in Korea, it's kimchi. Kimchi. And in most Latin American countries, apparently, it's whiskey. Say whiskey. Say Whoa, whiskey. Whiskey. That e. Apparently, gives e. you that. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. No. <laughs> 
I mean, can't you just say smile? But then, I mean, smiles is bad. Yeah, smile, smile does not work. So, so really, really good. Throw them off guard, catch them off guard, get them, say something weird that, that might just make them, that might evoke some reaction. And then as soon as a real reaction comes, that's when you have to be ready. That's when, when you have to shoot a lot. And then yeah. in, go ahead. There's a website somebody in the chat room has passed along. Uh, uh, it's a, uh, uh, an, from Smosh, an animated uh, GIF fest of celebrities. You know, I, you know, I pose for quite a few pictures. Every day we have people in the studio and they want to take pictures. And I have the same, I probably have the same face I use every time. <laughs> Apparently celebrities do the same thing. Here's a Lindsay Lohan animated GIF. And it's her face oh, yeah. is the same in hundreds of pictures. She doesn't, Absolutely. she has a look. And I, I think you could probably do that to me too. That So those of us who pose a lot, uh, you know, that's... We probably always do have that kind of same smile, but if I mean, you, I at least it looks some, natural. Yeah, I would bet that some of those people um, um, practice that in front of the mirror just <laughs> to, to 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 get this smile, and then then to learn how how to yeah. move your face in order to to get to that. Well, look. if you do, yeah. if you take a lot, if people take a lot of pictures of you, you kind of learn what it feels like in the musculature for that look, and then you yep. just you know you just you do it. I try not to because my face will freeze that way. So sometimes I smile sideways. I'm not a honey face. It, it, there's an art to a model. Like it, man, that's sometime we should talk about that. I mean, do, do you think anybody could learn how to pose for pictures? Yes. In a, you, you, that is possible. Yes, yes, it is yeah. possible. And as a photographer, you also have a lot of a lot of power over how, how to make people look good. There are there are a lot of you know we have problem zones. There are the chins, there's the nose, there are the eyes, and the different things that people don't like about them in photos. That is usually because the photographer doesn't know how to move someone, how to pose someone, um, to get to get those areas to look good. I mean, I'm 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 the guy with two chins. So if if someone tells me to move my head backwards, right. that is not going right. to produce a nice result. So so there are very simple things that you can actually do. Maybe we should also do a special on modeling. Yeah, on, modeling. On how people. to model. Yeah. Actually, you're good. Yes. I I've worked with you. You've actually uh, uh, posed me. For headshots, and I and I think you're very good at getting people to look a little bit different. Uh, well, you you're yeah. easy to work with. I do a lot of modeling in my spare time. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what for? Uh, you know, before <laughs> pictures mostly. Uh, oh, good. Chris Marquardt, he is the photo guy. You can find him at chrismarquardt.com. Now, let me tell you, there's quite a few consonants here. M A R Q U A R D T. Maybe just go to Discover the Top Floor. You know how to spell that, .com. You can find all his workshops. Uh, and we have an assignment. We're asking people, not a contest, Tether, assignment. We're asking people to take pictures of... What? Wet. 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 Ooh, and the review wet. is going to be in a few weeks. Heather, you have at least two weeks to go, so you can still submit one. Oh, good. I just have to upload it. I actually found the great shot. Oh, good. <laughs> not old ones. No, this would be sometimes it's yeah yeah recent okay. <laughs> no, the I'm idea would be this is an excuse to go out and take more photos. Yeah. I just got uh, a a new Olympus camera that uh, is a waterproof. You can go fifty feet uh, under the water, Ooh. waterproof tough the TG two, and so I could get I could get some underwater wet stuff. Good. Yeah. I don't think we have any of those yet. Yeah. All right. Well, here's what you take the picture, you tag it with the word wet, you upload it to Flickr, which is free. Flickr.com. There's no e in Flickr. Actually, you could either way. It, they, they apparently they rented both websites, and uh, and then make sure you get it to the tech guy group because that's where we're looking. And uh, in fact, you can go to the tech guy group on Flickr and see all the entries so far and do something different. No prize, just maybe we're going to mention your name on the show because we'll take a look at three of the best in a few weeks. Thank you, Chris Marquardt. Absolutely, always a pleasure. You look good in black and white. Yes. I know. Yeah, you, I, 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 Chris is uh, in in Germany, so he didn't get this reference. I said you look like uh, Andy Griffith, but no, he, yeah, he has no too, idea what I'm talking too about. Too much of an American reference. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just, Actually, it could be Opie. Yeah, maybe he's Opie. Doesn't know who that means. Either. Well, if you, if you say so, I'm next. After right after this, I'm gonna Google the the go the watch Griffith some Andy Griffith. And, and yeah, go watch some Andy, Andy Griffith. Griffith. I will do that. All right. Hey, thank you, Chris. Take care. Absolutely. Chris Marquardt joins us each and every week at this time to talk about digital photography. Remember, we're looking for pictures that illustrate the word or concept of wet. W-E-T. This is. I'm going to put a link in the show notes to this uh, photo site, this Smosh site, where they show how these these celebrities, you know, they have one face, and they pose over and over again, and it always looks the same. 
8888 Ask Leo. We'll take a <laughs> uh, another phone call right after this. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. I knew this about the president. He definitely does that. But what does he do? Well, if if you're the president, you're posing for all these pictures. Actually, this is oh, I don't know so why in deference, you lean your head toward. If you're the... running a small business, you can't. Well, you just you just do whatever speed. it is. That's why you need the world's fastest two-sided. It's funny printer. though because the I'm sure you could do this with me too because it doesn't look like he's moving at all, and all these different people are showing up. But imagine, I mean, he spends most of his time probably during the day doing this. Horrible. But is even that photoshopped? Uh, no, <laughs> I mean, no. That could be shopped. <laughs> well, it was a photo op. It's just they just take all the frames. You could do the same thing with me. I, I guarantee you somebody will do that. If you just go to uh, Google Plus and you see all the pictures people have posted posing with me back here, it's always the same stupid picture. <laughs> you know... <laughs> Now it's going to enter the cruel territory or whatever, but <laughs> there's people who always do this. Oh, yeah, the thumbs up. Yeah, I do that, or too. something like that. Yeah, I do a lot of that. Hey. Hey. Blue oh, Steel. I that always did this. Like, yeah. don't take my picture. Hey, yeah. you. Hey, you. Hey. <laughs> hey, I'm talking to you. Yeah. Do I change it? I, I don't know. I have to, we have to look. I could probably do this myself because... Uh, People, people tag me on Google+, and a lot of them are the pictures in the studio, you know. What about the whole jut the chin forward thing? I have. It doesn't matter how much a jut. <laughs> but hasn't a photographer I could, made you do that? Like, I could jut all I want. I'm still going to have several chins. Oh, okay. There's just no, um, uh, no the way around that. That I heard people said that you should say, or the uh, Olsen twins anyway, would say prune because it gave them that prune. Oh, the puffy lip. Not, yeah, prune. not like duck. But so there's a lot of pictures of me in the hat. I think it wouldn't be hard for me for you to find. These are all oh, Google it's Plus. A, it's just a Leo. Cardboard what are you laughing cutout? at? <laughs> yeah, it's a, actually there is a Leo cardboard cutout somewhere. Uh, it's this picture you could probably get a hundred of. I don't know about that. I don't remember this one. Wait, was that you in, <laughs> in jail? What? <laughs> <laughs> this is kind of fun. Maybe it's because it's pictures of me. That's why I enjoy it. I, get, I don't know. I don't know. I guess I look a little different. I change it up a little bit. There's, that's, the, that's the face I'm thinking of. This one right here. I think there's a lot of me uh, doing that. That's a good face. I don't know. It looks like somebody's geese goosing me. It's your thanks so much for coming yeah. face. Yeah. Here I am drunk with eye ass. Thursday. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> glad Who that are you drinking with? I'm glad that exists on the internet. The hell? Whoops. Here's Eileen. Oh, wow. That was weird. What's going on there? How do I zoom in on that? That's a face I make a lot. Yeah, underbite. Something. White man dancing. I think I was trying to be funny, but maybe not. Were you dancing to Lady Gaga there? Do you remember the song? Paparazzi. <laughs> There's some funny pictures He is here. doing Bollywood. There are some very funny pictures on here. What is Sarah doing? She's photobombing me. <laughs> this is kind of funny. There's a lot of uh, action shots. Misty watercolored memories. When I'm dead, you're going to have a hell of a slideshow. This is the slideshow. Yep. Somebody said there's no pictures of me and Heather. That's because we're on opposite sides of the glass. We're never together. <laughs> and we've never been seen at the same place at the same time. Leo Laporte, the tech Guy, a little gaga from our uh, musical director, Nathan Stephen. <laughs> 8888 Ask Leo. That's the phone number. Back to the phones we go. David in Ithaca. Hi, David. Leo Laporte here. Hey, Leo. Uh, good to talk to you. Thanks I've for uh, visited you. Um, I'm the, the guy at Cornell who studies disgust. Oh, I love this. We've mentioned this uh, before. His specialty is the evolutionary benefit 
to the feelings of disgust that one feels. And it makes sense because if you smell some food and it, you go, oh, that's disgusting, it would probably be a good idea not to eat it. It is. It's a good, it's strong. We call that strong avoidance. Avoid that. <laughs> so when you, which does, which it doesn't explain why people eat kimchi, but that's another matter. Uh, you know, that's not good upbringing, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, from that same from that same research on uh, facial expressions of emotion, uh, the conversation with with Chris smile, Martin, yeah, to me because of the yeah, some people can't do a genuine, you know, there's a difference between a genuine, what they call a Duchenne smile and a fake smile. Yeah, because a, a fake smile, you just tighten the side of your your cheek muscles and you, yeah, you, you just, it's a, it's a, it's so close to a grimace that it doesn't, it's not, doesn't look like you're happy. Exactly, but believe it or not, a lot of people can't smile genuinely on cue. And ah. so, uh, so the pictures just have that. And what, one of the things I was going to say, having, having not only seen all of those Google pictures of you, but also having one with you myself is that is that you're you're pretty good genuine smiling. I, f I fake good. it well. Yeah, you fake sincerity very well. <laughs> I'm very good at faking sincerity. <laughs> I just think uh, happy thoughts. Yeah, we leave there thinking that you you really care. No, yeah, you don't you don't you don't uh, it uh, but that's and I suppose, I suppose Chris will talk about this when we talk about modeling. That's exactly what you don't want to do is some mechanical tightening of the cheek muscles cuz that's not going to yield a good result. You have to kind of think happy. Exactly, and no, and I, I was, you know, being being a facetious there because the, I think that the genuine smile that you do give is it, the best way to give a genuine smile is to actually be having a decent time with people, and what you have a thought, and that causes you to smile, right? I'll tell you the secret. I'm thinking about God, I'm going to get to go home soon. <laughs> that makes me so happy. <laughs> It's almost over. It's, a great it's almost for that, over. For that reason, I got I'd be smiling all day. <laughs> hey, what? Can, what can I see? Now, is your discipline psychology? It is psychology. Psychology. It, it's uh, sort of broadly, but social psychology and emotion and, and moral judgment, uh, especially ethics and morality, and uh, emotions and how emotions play a role in our ethics. So, disgust interested me a long time ago because it seems like we, we use disgust to condemn other people, that face of condemnation that we make. What is the disgust uh, look? Is it a frown? It's a wrinkling of the nose and a curling of the upper lips. So it's a little bit like the bitter face. If you give quinine solution to an infant, oh yeah, they'll show that the beginnings of that face. And then adults, we expand it uh, beyond just things that are already in our mouth, but to smells, to ideas. And so you see people make this very, very sort of get away from me. Uh, yeah. Uh, Wrinkle, wrinkling the nose, that's, that's to symbol, symbolize I've smelled something not so good. Yeah, and there's some, there's some work that it actually even helps prevent pathogens from entering the nasal passageways. Oh, so you're, um, actually, you're actually doing that. Yeah, at least, at least there's some evidence for that. For that. You've seen the yeah. videos of babies eating lemons for the first time? I love those. I love those. <laughs> Well, hey, there's always the first time, right? You, you, eat a, you eat your first lemon. It's kind of a shock. looks like a piece of fruit, and then you, it, it hits you, and it's like, know, and, whoa! And the, wonderful, whoa. Um, the wonderful thing about emotional expressions is they're easy to catch. And so you right. show people those videos, and you can see in their face, you can see them making... <laughs> You know, some more than others, but they're starting to make that. You know, we're we're built that. that way. This is where our this is where our brains are so good at. It's and you know, to tie this back to technology is what computers are so poor at. We're getting better at facial recognition, and there's been some massive uh, improvements in, you know, computer right. learning and computer intelligence. But there's something humans are so finely tuned to. Uh, Receiving and understanding expressions, subtle expressions. Exactly. Our, our little lump of analog meat there does such a good job. And we get in our labs here at Cornell, we can get software that can decode facial expressions as they're occurring. <laughs> but you know what? Get the lighting a little wrong, get the skin a little too dark or the background a little too dark, and, and it messes it up. Nothing yeah. compares to human judges. It's, in, it's really so far, interesting. I mean, the NSA might, might have us be, uh, they might know what I'm feeling right now. But, uh, uh <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if it's gonna. I don't know if it's gonna happen uh, in my lifetime because I. Just, I feel like. Well, that's why handwriting recognition, speech recognition, these things are hard to do. Humans are really good at it, uh, and computers just. Uh, they're still a little mechanical, and they can't get nuance and subtlety. And right. And thank goodness, right? To brute force the problem, and yeah, it's just not, it's very it's not challenging. the way the brain does it, so yeah. it's, not, it's not really the way that we're going to get to it. But, but I, I should get to my question and not take up all your listeners' time, but it's okay. related because uh, 
inspired by you in a whole lot of things. Um, a, a philosopher friend of mine have a humble little podcast that we started about a year ago. Is it a philosophy podcast? It's philosophy and psychology of ethics. Oh, that sounds great. Tell me, where, where can I get it? I, you know, I hesitate to call and, and even... I oh, come on, plug it. Come on, you know you want to, David. That's, I appreciate, I I appreciate you, your reticence. Thank you, but go ahead. Yeah, no, I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's called Very Bad Wizards, but I a bit verybadwizard.com. After the Wizard of Oz, who says, exactly. I, I'm a very bad wizard, but I'm a good man. Yeah. yeah. Verybadwizards.com. And I should just warn, it's not a Twit family podcast. We we took this opportunity to talk like two academics would talk at a bar. So there's a lot of... Uh, <laughs> a lot of epithets. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So we didn't do it as, as, you, as, as you taught us well. We do it because we love to do good. it. And, uh, well, how can I help you? What can I do besides giving you a plug for verybadwizards.com? Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I really wasn't going to say anything. Mm -hmm. uh, because I've called before, you've helped me with audio, you've helped me with, with uh, Skype, and it's been a great help. And we've been luckily growing our audience a bit to the point where we use Squarespace uh, to, uh, for our website. And I actually host the files on Amazon because... I, I Good. S3, S3 storage. S3, okay. right. Um, I want to just know how I can get a better sense of who's actually subscribed. So I get hits to the RSS link uh, that they give me daily on Squarespace, but I don't know how to convert that into how many people are actually uh, listening or downloading yeah. or subscribing. Welcome to my world. This is, uh, I know, and this is a challenge. I know, and you're the one I think that this is increasingly... Here's you know, what, here's what we do. Here's what I, it's actually a good way to do this, and it's free. Uh, the ad agency that we have used for many years for our podcast, PodTrack, P-O-D-T-R-A-C.com, uh, has a free podcast counting tool that will do give you the numbers of downloads and they do it because eventually they hope that you might get an advertiser they might sell an ad on your podcast right right so i actually am reluctant because i don't care for ads no, no it doesn't matter this is free you don't have to you don't ever have to sell ads uh they okay. just do it because they know in the long run that this will help their business what okay. you'll be doing is adding what we call a redirect to your rss feed so when people click, and we do this, if you look at the full URL. Yeah, I always see that you have a pod track. Yeah. There's a little yeah. redirect at the beginning. So if you go to twit.tv and just, you know, right click on or hover over the link, you'll see the full link. And it goes through pod track to our file. And what happens, because it does that, pod track can, it's a way of like kind of recording that you went, you, you went to our file and pod track can right. add that. And then they do a bunch of massaging. They make sure that they deduplicate it. So if somebody downloads the podcast 20 times, they still only count once. Okay. Um, they make sure that all the IP addresses are unique. They do a lot of work on it. And then they give you a free report, which you can log into your pod track account. And, and the files are, are hosted there. Or no, it won't. Through. Yeah, it doesn't change anything you're doing. You just add this to the beginning of the link. You continue to host your files in the same spot. Uh, and it won't screw up anybody else's current RSS links? No. Okay. You're That's not going to change the uh, the RSS feed is the same. All you're going to do is when you create the link to your file, you add a little bit of text. They'll explain it to the beginning. And it it goes through. It's, a, it's in effect, a way of going through their server to get to your file. And, okay. and Podtrack does that for free. And uh, it's useful. The other thing, yeah, you, of course, you can use... There's another one called Libsyn, but I don't know that I want... To give up control of they my host it in order for that to work libsyn hosts it okay. um, now it's cheaper than s3 than amazon so right. I, I would look at libsyn um and then you could also use google analytics on your s3 uh site yeah i i try that google just gives you so much that it that that it's hard sometimes to tell what what of that is an actual subscriber and whatnot maybe i'm just out of my depth there but, yeah. but uh, the other thing i, I would say is when you get this number you may be a little sad it may be a yeah. thousand or two thousand or three thousand. A lot of times, uh, you know, uh, people expect twenty or thirty or forty thousand people listening. But you know, if you think you know, about that many people in a big room listening to what you say, if, even if it's only five hundred, that's pretty darn good. So uh, don't be discouraged. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Plug in PodPress, PodTrack, not counting PodTrack clicks and downloads. Huh. That would, I don't know what that is all about. So if you're using PodPress, maybe this is a bad choice. Um, my suspicion would be that's not PodTrack, that's something PodPress is doing. 
I shall return because it's time for me to go to the bathroom. I hope you don't mind. <laughs> I was, sorry folks, I was chatting with our studio audience. They're saying, did Leo fall in? He never came back. Well, hey, 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 how are you today? Leo Laporte here, the Tech Guy Hour 3 of the Tech Guy Program. Where we're talking computers, the internet, cell phones, home theater, digital photography. 8888-ASK-LEO, that's the number. 888-827-5536. Toll free from anywhere in the U.S. Outside the U.S., Skype will work. Just call that number. It's a toll-free number. won't cost you a thing. 8888-ASK-LEO. Gary calling from Canada. All of Canada. Really? Hi, Gary. Where, where? I bet you're in Saskatchewan, and she just couldn't fit that in. Where are you calling from, Gary? Hello. Hello. Where are you calling from, Gary? I'm calling from Canada, Prince Edward Island. Prince, oh, PEI. She could have yeah. fit that in, PEI. Amber's home territory. Amber MacArthur, my great co-host for many uh, years on a call for help in uh, Toronto. Yeah, and I just wanted to verify for you because you said you couldn't verify it a little earlier on in the program that it is toll free from Canada. Ah, wonderful! So I can now start saying toll free from anywhere in the U.S. and Canada. Well, apparently it worked for me. You just called eighty eight eighty eight Ask Leo and it went through. Yes. Let me know if you get a bill. Uh, I don't think I will. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> can I ask you a question while I'm on the air. Well, but of course, that's what you're here for. Okay, uh, you mentioned Olympus camera a little earlier. Yeah. And I came across a uh, used Olympus camera recently, which I purchased, and uh, I've been having fun learning with it. Great. It was a learning camera. Which one? Uh, it's an older one. Uh, it's the 512 Ultra Zoom. Okay. And uh, it's taking beautiful pictures, so I'm very, very happy with it. I just wondered if you, what your thoughts were on the Olympus brand. I am a, a big fan of the Olympus brand. In fact, um, they have a newer uh, series of uh, digital cameras that, so the ones we're talking about, the, the tough camera that I talked about, the TG2 and your uh, Olympus, the 512, are what we call point and shoots. They have a fixed lens, um, you know, they're compact. Uh, inexpensive cameras but of course professional photographers like interchangeable lenses and Olympus has made interchangeable uh, camera lens cameras DSLRs for some time uh, but they've got a new kind of mid-range that I am hugely fanatical about now the OMDs uh, and uh, we're going as you might know I'm taking a vacation in Europe in a couple of weeks and uh, I was trying to find a lightweight interchangeable lens camera because my big Canon is just so heavy. And I settled on the OMDs, and I've been so happy with the quality, the range of lenses available. And these are Olympus. They're very, very good. So, yeah, they make great stuff. Good. I have one further question, if I may. Sure. Uh, with regard to the card I'm using in this camera, it's an XD card. I'm not very familiar with uh, XD. It, it's different. Yeah, these are, and they don't make them anymore. Okay. That's one disadvantage. Yeah. Uh, everybody's moved to SD. The high, high-end cameras still use compact flash or CF, but uh, SD is really the way to go. Okay, so the camera is basically dated? Yeah, it's pretty it's dated. It's not a problem for me. I'm learning, using it as a learner, and uh, that XD That's fine. is uh, I'm capable of putting in probably 500 uh, photos on that. So yeah, it's plenty. So as Chris Marquardt has told me many times, it's not the, uh, the, the, the camera, it's a photographer, you know? Nobody said Oscar Wilde was a better writer because he used a nice pen. Uh, it really is your eye, your ability to compose, to find the shot. To get just the right shot, and even a camera phone can do that. Uh, of course, as you get more proficient, sometimes you want the image quality to improve. You know, uh, sometimes you take a shot, a really great shot, and you say, "Boy, if only that, you know, there were more detail in that, it were crisper, it would be really wonderful. I could print it in a big size, that kind of thing." And that's when you start moving on to bigger cameras, fancier cameras, and more importantly, I think than anything, the ability to use different lenses. Uh, the the real negative, as as far as I can tell, with a point and shoot. And a, and a camera phone are the one single focal length. You you know you can at least zoom with a point and shoot. You can't really zoom effectively with a camera phone. 
Um, but the ability to say, I'm going to use a wide-angle lens today or a long telephoto lens tomorrow. Um, I'm going to use a very fast lens that lets in a lot of light. Those, those things really add to the kinds of shots you can get. It still comes down to your eye, your composition, your ability. And I've seen people take much better pictures than I will ever take with a cheap camera or a camera phone. Um, and, you know, that makes me sad, but... <laughs> That's why I spend more money on good cameras, hoping that someday I'll be a better photographer. And it hasn't worked. Randy, Cedar City, Utah. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hi, Randy. Well, hey, 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 Leo. Hey, hey, hey. I, I took your line. Sorry about that. <laughs> that has been. You know why I do that? Because I can't say good morning because some people are listening in the afternoon and evening. I can't say good afternoon for the same reason. So uh, I settled on hey, hey, hey. Hey, boo-boo. You know how many people... Uh, follow along with you saying that one. No, it? really? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I do it. And this it's, morning it's... I was in the shower and I didn't raise my hand. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and listen, another thing, it's not fair that you get to go to the restroom when I'm, you know, I'm stuck on hold because I don't know when Heather's going to barge in. Say, oh, hey, good point. Know. Good point. Uh, Heather's probably heard more than the average bear in, in, in that regard, so I wouldn't be shy. Yeah, boy, she sure is a great addition to your show. I know, I just adore her. Uh, we were lucky because, you know, 11 years with Dr. Dean, uh, and that's that's a lot of uh, valuable experience. And uh, a call screener, I don't know if people really understand this in talk radio, makes or breaks the show. Um, so. Yeah, plus she's, she's, not a, she's not a geek, so she... She brings. I beg your uh, pardon. I, I think she's quite geeky. <laughs> you think so? <laughs> well, what I mean she's is, a she's, she is a geek in a different way. I think she is a normal geek, so where yeah, yeah, she yeah. loves tech. She really seems to like technology and enjoy it, but uh, isn't isn't like us, you know, kind of obsessed with it. Yeah. Yeah. So listen, I I have a kind of a, a stupid question. I cannot. I just got myself a Galaxy S4. Love it, and uh, and I used to uh, be able to watch Twit. Uh, on my old smartphone, but now I can't find a decent app so I can watch Twit. Yeah, let me recommend um, the one I use, which is from F-C-O-N. It's called Twit.tv. Twit, uh, for those who don't know, is my podcast network. We do podcast this show. We also stream it live. You can watch it on your smartphone using a smartphone app like the FCON app. On the iOS side, I recommend um, the uh, Shift Key software uh, app. He has one for Android, but I, with all due respect, I like the FCon one the best. Okay, and how come you don't make one? Uh, you know, I, we should. If I had unlimited funds, we would. Um, okay. But it's expensive. You know, we looked into making a game, of all things, and it was a hundred thousand dollars. And I said, well, I guess we won't be doing that. Uh, making apps, a good app, is not. Uh, a trivial thing. We'd have to hire a, pro a programmer basically to do it. Okay. So what we've chosen to do is we do. You can do it on the web. Uh, you know, Twit.tv works on mobiles. If you if it, you know on Android, go to uh, m.twit.tv. I think the mobile page. Um, but uh, so we do we do support it via the web. But we we let third parties make the apps because you know it's not just Android and iPhone. There's also Windows Phone. Dimitri Leolin has done a great app for that. Uh, there's uh, uh, smart TVs. We have a Samsung app. We have a Roku app. And there are different programmers for uh, for many of those. And we just couldn't afford to do all of those. So we thank our community. I mean, they really do a great job. Well, I'll, ch I'll check out FCON for sure. Yeah. Hey, um, I want to say thanks for, for uh, getting on Google Plus more often. It's yeah, nice. I love Google Plus. I, you know, I've always, from day one, I've liked Google Plus, but it hasn't attracted the. Um, uh, the, the massive crowd that Facebook has or Twitter, I think you have to use all three. Google Plus is the place I go for uh, for good conversation and, and, uh, and great-looking yeah. pictures. I mean, oh, it's fabulous. Absolutely. For yeah. Okay, so will you ever incorporate a Google Plus Hangout? For, uh, we have many times. In fact... Uh, no, I mean on your Twitch show. Yeah, we have many times. Uh, generally, we do that on the live coverage. So, for instance, September 10th, when we do the live iPhone launch coverage, we will probably have a Hangout. We have done that in the past. Um, and we use, believe it or not, Hangouts uh, for some of our um, our contributors on the podcasts. Um, and I've done a few Hangouts, and it's fun. It's hard, a little harder to manage, <laughs> but that's that's okay. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. I know.
Doesn't work for audio as a window phone. I, yeah, well, I don't know hey, if Dimitri is actively supporting that or not. I mean, I, of course, it, it, this is a, every company has this issue. Uh, Apple has this issue. Do you make it in-house or do you encourage uh, independent developers to do it? And um, we don't just didn't have the money to make them in, uh, our apps in-house. So thank goodness we have independent developers who do this stuff. Um, so, Tedism, um, I'm going to leave September 17th. Lisa and I go fly to uh, Venice, and we're going to have a few days in Venice. In fact, I hired a uh, local tour guide to take us on a photography expedition around Venice. And then uh, we get on the Seabourn Odyssey, and we're sailing in the Adriatic, sailing down uh, to Croatia, and then to the Greek islands and Athens, and then... Uh, on to Istanbul, and we get off the boat in Istanbul and spend a few days there and come back October 8th. So, yeah, it's kind of the trip of a lifetime. It's I'm already sad that it's over. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> I don't want to go on it because I'm going to be sad when I get back. Well, no, 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 don't think of it like that. Well, I can't help it. We I, always grow and expand when you're on vacation and you get to carry it with you always and then you get the pictures developed and you start wearing the jewelry that you bought while you were there. Oh, my God. She gets it. <laughs> she gets it. It's all about the jewelry. She, that's the one thing. Lisa says, I don't need you to spend a lot of money on me, but I do want diamonds. <laughs> what? <laughs> Listen, some of the, the pearls and whatnot in uh, the Greek islands, oh, my God. Really? Pearls? Uh, I don't yeah, think she likes pearls, thank goodness. jewelry. Oh, my God. She likes uh, stones, though. Yeah. Yeah. And, oh, there's amazing, oh, the art. Yeah. And then you gaze upon those things, and it reminds you of that great time you had and that piece of fish you enjoyed by the seaside. Mm, I can't wait. If I'm sad that it's yeah. almost over. Stop it. <laughs> Adele was the same way. He'd be like, I'm back to work. And I'm like, oh my God, you went around the world. Like, that's I a know, thing. I know. Own it. Keep it in your heart, soul, brain, or whatever. Well, that's why I'm bringing eight cameras. <laughs> eight cameras. <laughs> I'm it's bringing like having eight cars. You I'm can bringing, only drive one at once. I'm bringing right? a GoPro. Well, they all do different things. The GoPro uh, for the um, underwater action shots. The uh, the Canon, the uh, Olympus uh, ruggedized camera. That's for the beach because when you go to the beach, you know it's waterproof, sandproof, blah blah. blah. Uh, the OMD for high quality photography on the run. The Canon 5D Mark III for really high quality photography. That's probably what I'll bring on the Do you um, photo plan walk. On doing a lot of running? No, I can't run. I, I, I get out of breath. The camera for when you're running from the cops. Yeah, no, it's more lightweight. Yeah, <laughs> it's more lightweight. Um, so I'm, yeah, I'm very. Uh, that's not as many cameras as I said. That's only five cameras. And then, um, yeah, I'm excited. Burkhoff, I think the uh, try try that FCon app. I think it works pretty nicely on uh, the Nexus Seven. Yeah, Santorini, we're going there. Milos, Pilos, Mykonos, Ia, Pia, and Zia. <laughs> I want to go to Santorini. Oh, I'm excited. It's one day in each island, though. You know, you arrive in the morning. The boat sails in in the morning. You go around the island. Sun sets, and you go home. And then the boat goes at night. You'll want to go back to Santorini, I think. Oh, I'm sure I want to go back to all of them. I always think of uh, the cruises as like a Whitman sampler. Yes, exactly. So you can decide which candy you want to buy by the pound. Plunge your finger into the backside, scoop it out, and go, ew, and cross <laughs> it aside. And <laughs> Micking us, ew. <laughs> and then put it back where it was. <laughs> Leo Laporte, the tech guy from Temecula, comes our next call. Jake, you're on the line. Hi, Jake. Leo Laporte. Hi, Leo. Great show. Thank you. Um, I'm off to Paris on Wednesday. Well, la-dee-da. <laughs> hey, you know, we work hard. We've got to play. I know. I love Paris. We're Actually, I'm probably going in December for Le Web. Yeah, I love it. Uh, one of my favorite spots. Me too. Um, well, I've got, so, I've got, at my office, I have an Uma box, which I love. Yeah. Um Uma is voice over the internet uh, telephony. You plug it into your uh, internet connection, and uh, you make phone calls with it. Correct. Uh, all around the world, I've got friends and relatives in Israel, in South Africa, where I come from, Australia. I've sent them all little magic jacks. Uh -huh. And 
I don't know if it's legal or not, but uh, we speak to each other, they speak to each other, and, we, and everyone has a local Temecula phone number, which is great. Oh, that's clever. Um, so now in Paris, I really am trying to have a vacation and stay away from the business. <laughs> but because I'm a small business owner, I need to be in that's touch. Right. I, don't, I don't want to do a whole voice or data plan. I just want to use their Wi-Fi. I've been told that their Wi-Fi is pretty good. So I'm looking at either Google Voice or Magic Jack on my phone. Alas, Google Voice doesn't work internationally. Aha. Uh -huh. So we just eliminated that. It's too bad because it's really great, but they've not rolled it out uh, globally. You can make calls with Google Voice from the U.S., but you can't do it from Paris. Okay. So basically putting Magic Jack on my phone is the way to do it. Uh, I would just use Skype. Then you don't need any hardware. Magic Jack, really, it's funny because it's, I guess it's replacing a computer. It's got a computer, you know, a little processor in it and stuff. But you're bringing a laptop, aren't you? No, 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 no. There's an app. You can go. I, I've got a, um, no. I've got an Evo and you can just go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but you need, you need something with a CPU. And so the Magic Jack USB key will work with just a phone. But if you're bringing a smartphone or a laptop, I would just use Skype. Okay. Uh, why pay for a service when Skype is free? Yeah, that's true. And, uh, you you know, for I think, I can't remember what the price for, you know, the high-end Skype Deluxe or whatever they call it, but something around 99 bucks a year with international incoming and outbound calls. You get a phone number. Um, I think uh, Skype is a, is, is a simple solution. If you like Magic Jack, it's very similar. Um, Skype gives you video, which is nice. If you if somebody else is using Skype, they can you can see them. They can see you. Right. I, I don't. I, I just want something that works. You know, I, I, Magic Jack's been great because I've as I say, I've been I've sent twenty units around the world. And I'm amazed. That's really a cool idea. Yeah. Yeah, I I think Skype's going to work fine, but uh, yeah, you could use Magic Jack. It's it's just the same idea. The idea is voice over IP, Internet Protocol, or VoIP, and it just means all you need is a connection. The real challenge is going to be uh, getting a, you know a good strong signal. If you're in a hotel in Paris that has Wi-Fi, chances are it'll be adequate for voice. Okay, that's yeah. what I needed. Yeah. Thanks, Leo. You're welcome. Hey, have a great trip. What fun. Thank you. Yeah. Hey, Jack, sorry about that. Welcome, Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hi, Leo, how are you? I'm great, how are you? I'm better if you can help me. Okay. I'll take the challenge. Fire away. <laughs> I'm using Windows XP, and I have blue screen of death. Mm -mm. Okay, turn off the uh, internet, because I hear myself coming back to okay, me. hang on a That'll confuse you. The, uh, you know, the, we always have to say turn off the radio, but the problem is turning off the internet, because the internet is closer in time than the radio. Yeah, it is. Yeah, the radio's 40 seconds. The internet is almost instant. So you have XP, and you're getting a blue screen of death every time or just sometimes? Yeah, as soon as I boot up, oh. I, I used to be able to get into safe mode, but now I can't get into safe mode. I, when I try F8, all I get out, all the only options I have is uh, F1 or F2 okay. to get into setup utility. So what that's saying is that something's pretty seriously wrong. You blue screens on XP and later mean that Either the hardware is failing or a driver is crashing. It's such a bad crash that the computer can't go on. You know, if a program, if, if Internet Explorer crashes on Windows, you continue to use Windows. Explorer dies, you relaunch it. But when you get a blue screen, that means this is such a bad crash, I can't go on. And there's only a couple of things that can cause that. Bad hardware or a driver, something that has access to system memory. And uh, usually, if it's a driver, going into a safe mode will eliminate that problem, right? Because that's what safe mode is. Load with the minimum set of drivers. It still has to load some, but just not the typical ones you're using. If you can't get into safe mode, then probably what has happened is either you've got some hardware that's gone bad, a memory chip that's bad, or something like that. And that's, I hope that's not the case, because that's hard to diagnose and hard to fix. Usually not, not cheap to fix. Or... And I'm hoping this is the case. And it's probably more likely. You've had a hard drive problem. And the software that's going to load when Windows is loading is crashing the computer. And that can happen. You know, one bit changed on a critical system file can cause this. It doesn't have to be a catastrophic failure. It could literally be just one bit. 
So uh, the first thing I would do, if you've got a Windows install disk, and I hope you do, and I hate it that computers are sold these days without, is to run it. Run it as if you're going to install it. At one point, it'll say, hey, wait a minute, I see Windows on here. You say, yes. Would you repair that? Press R. If that repairs it, you're golden. If not, you might have to replace the hard drive. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Ba 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 ba. Hey hey hey. Our show today brought to you by our friends at Bespoke Post. Do you know about this? Have you ever received a box of awesome? Would you like to? I took my boxes home. I have a I have a bunch of boxes of awesome. You want to see the box of awesome? Go to b e s p o k e bespoke post dot com slash twit and you can find out all about it bespoke post or bespoke is the name of the company is a curated boxes of great goodies the box of awesome they call it it's 45 dollars for a box but you're guaranteed to get something worth more than 45 dollars if you if you browse around you can see the variety of uh, bespoke to stuff i mean uh the, there's the queue do you, are you bringing me a bespoke Oh, thank you, Burke. A bespoke, a box of awesome has been delivered. I'm not sure if it's the right one. Well, what is the right one? Is there a right box of awesome? They're all wonderful. That's that's the truth of it. So imagine as this as a gift. Uh, every month you're going to get it, and you just open it up, and you look inside, and you say, what's in my box of, oh, this is the Q box. This is a nice one. I have this one at home. In fact, this it got me so excited that I actually went out and I bought some of the things I got in it, like the ketchup. The Kensington ketchup. <gasps> this is gourmet ketchup. You've never had such good ketchup in your life. So they've got ketchup. They've got tin mustard, also amazing. They've got a little jar of honey in here. And then you also get some rubs. This is from Napa Valley Whole Spice. These are incredible rubs. In fact, uh, I don't know if you've... If you're a barbecuer, this is... Th th to me, this was like heaven. The Moroccan harissa seasoning. This is the one I put on chicken, chipotle and honey. <gasps> On grill, on uh, barbecued chicken breast, unbelievable chimichurri dry seasoning. You also get some planks. You ever do? You ever barbecue with planks? Get these out here. So you soak these wooden planks, and then you put a salmon or a, you wouldn't do a steak on it, but a fish is really good. There's alder, hickory, and these are reusable. You can use them a few times as cedar, and it just oh the flavor just goes right through the fish or the meat, and it's amazing. And then, well, that's not all. There's also some special pepper from India. Hand-harvested estate, sun, single estate, sun-dried black pepper. See, what you getting the, getting the idea here? And there's more. This is the Q box. But there's a different box every month. Uh, I got uh, a wine decanter one month. Martini uh, mixing set another month. You learn so much. Could you use a steak on the... I'll have to try the steak on the altar. So here's the deal. If you go to... BespokePost.com slash twit. You'll be taking 20% off the first month of your subscription. $45 a box. That includes shipping and easy returns. Of course, you see what the box is ahead of time. So you can opt out anytime and never be charged if you don't want it. Uh, one month gift, $45. Three months, $135. Half a year, $270. It's great for the guy who has everything. BespokePost.com slash twit. Get a box of awesome every month. Box of awesome. Mmm. Oh, that smells good. Chimichurri dry seasoning. Are you getting hungry? I'm hungry. Parsley, garlic, onion, red chili, black pepper, oregano, cilantro, sea salt, and cumin. Guess where this is made? Petaluma. They sent me a box of awesome with stuff from Petaluma in it. Isn't that hysterical? That's great. <laughs> that just blew me away. I didn't even know this. Petaluma is a foodie paradise. Wholespice.com. It's made on McDowell Boulevard. Just over here. I wonder if they Yeah, I knocked that off. Street. Thank you. Well, I'm going to get that. I'm telling you, I'm going to go get the Chipotle uh, honey Jimmy one. Chimichurri is so This good. is the best on chicken. Does that sound good, Oh. Nice. Nice, Nathan. <laughs> oh, the studio audience is getting... I'm throwing out this... Uh, <laughs> Take a little Petaluma home with you. <laughs> Take a little Petaluma home with you, that's right. 
<laughs> Leo Laporte, the tech guy, 8888. Ask Leo. You got robbed, sir. I gave you pepper. Here, have a nice uh, bottle of ketchup, too, to go with that pepper. There you go. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. We're passing out uh, door prizes. It's like the Oprah show. It is. Look Instead under of, your seat. Look under your seat. Instead of an iPad, you're getting spices. You're going home in a new Prius. <laughs> no. Oh, Stop sorry. it. <laughs> Poor guy. I gave, I gave, so we have a family visiting uh, from Union City. Union City, and uh, I gave them rubs, you know, for like steak, with chipotle honey rub and, uh, and stuff. <laughs> and then uh, another fellow's visiting. He's dropping off his kid at Pepperdine. He's visiting from Chicago. Oh, excellent. And uh, I gave him a bag of pepper. That's rotten. That's terrible. So I'm giving you some ketchup, too, to go with the pepper. Actually, that's the best ketchup ever. Yeah, I went online and ordered more bottles of it. It's really good. <laughs> we, it's a party here at the Tech Guy Lab. The family came together. What, there's got to be a saying there. The family that geeks together. Oh yeah, it's a family of geeks, yeah. definitely. Yeah, geeks together, that's them. Squeaks together. You know, we get we've had here. Uh, you know, we have. A, I should explain what's going on. We have an open studio. We allow people to come anytime. You can email tickets at twit.tv and. We, you don't even, there's no, there's no tickets. You can just come, but if you let us know, we'll make sure there's a chair for you. Um, and, of course, under that chair, a new car! But, uh, no, new car not included. But um, uh, uh, we get people from all walks of life, from all over the world. It's really fun. And almost always people from Australia and Canada come by uh, because it's, you know, Internet, global thing. But what's weird, well, the weirdest people we get are honeymooners. And I, I never understand that. <laughs> honey, I have a dream. <laughs> My, for our honeymoon, we're going to go watch the Tech Guy show. Oh, boy. Yeah, you got to wonder about that. Huh? <laughs> Actually, I think it happens a lot. I know. It happens more than one would think. Well, we're so close to wine country. Maybe that's. I always say, I always say to the guy, now make sure you take your new wife out to a nice dinner to make up for bringing her to this. <laughs> and we do have a do not sue us contract. Which we do. We have, we, we, you know, we didn't used to make people sign a waiver. You think I'm joking. We do, used to be you just walk in here and some guy fell. He tripped. Oh. And I felt terrible. I mean, I hurt his knee. And uh, we're just waiting for the lawsuit. I just like looking over my... So oh, now we make you sign a four-page waiver. I thought it was because you chucked a bottle of ketchup at his head. I did actually throw... I, are you, but see, I, don't, I can now throw ketchup at you. I don't have to worry. That would hurt. He signed a waiver. That no matter what Leo throws at me, I cannot sue. All righty then. You feel better. We didn't make you sign the waiver, Heather? Oh, uh, mm. no, not yet. I guess I should hurry oh up and get hurt. Hurry up and get hurt. If you're going to get hurt, get hurt. Bonked my head on this camera. <laughs> <laughs> Who should I talk to uh, next? Oh, Eddie? Lordy. Let's go to London, shall we? Speaking All right. of global trekking. Jolly good. <laughs> Say hello to Addy in London, UK. Hi, Addy. Hi, Leo. Thanks for taking my call. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you for calling. I'm glad to know you're listening. Yeah, I'm actually calling to you via Skype on my um, brand new Samsung Galaxy S4 Mini. Oh, you got the Mini, huh? That's the little one. Yeah, because I, I was considering getting myself either Galaxy S3 or some other phone. But the problem is with these bigger phones is that I want to be able to use them in one hand. Right. And, you know, the smaller I found that the smaller devices are, you know, um, better for my hand. Each their own, as they say. Well, and that's exactly right. In fact, that's really Samsung's marketing strategy is to make every possible size. And then you pick the size that fits your hand. I think that's sensible. Makes yeah. a lot of sense. Now, so, let me ask you. You're, so you're using Skype because you remember we had the caller a few minutes ago who's going to Paris. Uh, do you find Skype works well for international calling? Um, funny enough, you mentioned that because um, I ha haven't actually tested this. But I've, um um, but um, so far, it has worked well for me. Um, I've done a call to India once on it. Um, so far, it's working okay. We, When my daughter uh, lived in Paris for a year in high school, I set her up with uh, unlimited Skype, which was great because she could sit on her computer uh, in, in uh, France and call her friends, even call their cell phones. Uh, and it was free because I'd already paid the flat rate. And uh, I think that really helped a little bit with the homesickness. It really made it possible for her to visit with us. We would make weekly video calls, and it was really like she wasn't quite so far away. So, um, so true. Yeah. So what can I do for you? Well, actually, it's more like what I can do for your audience. Because I like I've, it. Um, 
because I'd like to break the mould and um, do a suggestion. Please do. So um, a lot of people like me, um, they may have a, they may want to switch over from iPhone or BlackBerry or maybe a old Nokia Symbian device <laughs> to the Galaxy S4 or a Galaxy S4 Mini in my case. And um, they can use a tool called Samsung Smart Switch. It's available for Mac or PC. It's free. And what you do is you just simply, excuse me, you just simply back up your device, um, your previous device, um, and then after your backup, you just simply plug in your Samsung Galaxy S4. You choose whatever you want, say your notes, your music, your video, your podcasts, and um, wherever you have space for it, it will just basically, in one click, transfer everything for you. So no this, now this does this on a, a desktop or a laptop computer, so it's for Windows or Mac. Yes. That's clever because then you, you essentially, as you would with an iPhone, you're backing up your telephone, your mobile, to the computer and then restoring it to the new mobile. Yeah, and I've also found that, it, that the transfer did actually go really well because it also transferred call logs and um, text nice. messages. Yeah, so you really feel like you're back at home. Uh, you know, everybody seems to be doing this. HTC does this now. When I first got my HTC One, uh, they have a transfer program that will copy from any other HTC phone or other phones uh, and copy as much as they can. Obviously, if you're moving from a different platform, it's not going to be yeah. quite as thorough. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, I noticed that Motorola has a migration wizard on the new Moto X that does much the same thing. Indeed, so. they do. I mean, I mean, it's just I think this is really good that all these different oh, you need it. Doing this because, you need it, and it you know, acknowledges yeah. the fact that people are buying new phones more often than they used to. It used to be, you'd buy a phone, you don't change it for years, but they're like computers yeah. now; they're being upgraded all the time, and so. Yeah, and yeah, exactly. I mean, yeah. and also it can be really hard to find, you know, the right tool um, for the average consumer to, you know, transfer your stuff over. It can just be a real hassle, and I'm just so thankful I stumbled upon this. Now, does this work? It works for, I would obviously, Samsung to Samsung phones. Will it work for non-Samsung phones or even non-Android phones? What does it work with? As far as I've been able to verify, it works with the, at the moment... The Samsung Galaxy S4 Mini, uh -huh. if you want to transfer to that, uh -huh. Galaxy S4, the S4 Active, it's basically the entire S4 line. Yeah, so it's for transferring from one Galaxy to another, basically. No, it's transferring from an iPhone. Oh, it works a, for an iPhone, too. Oh, good. Oh, yeah, good. no, no, no. You, can you know what they have that I love? They <laughs> And actually, Microsoft just did this for Windows Phone. It'll look at the apps on your old phone and given if you're moving from, say, an iPhone to Windows Phone or from an iPhone to Android, you're not going to have a duplicate exactly one for one. Mm -hmm. uh, it will recommend apps so that you know which apps are going to give you similar functionality to what you're used to. That's clever. Yeah. By the way, it's not just iPhone. It's also BlackBerry and um, old, wow. you know, Nokia Symbian Even device. Symbian. Wow, too. that's great. Yeah. As Very far clever. as I know, Samsung Smart Switch, that's the name. That's the name, and uh, it's Samsung from Samsung.com. Hey, thank you, Addy. I appreciate it. It's really nice to talk to you. And it's really nice to talk to you, too. Hey, I've got some other stuff to go on with, so I better um, let you go and let you take care of some other callers. All right, Addy, take care. Leo Laporte, the mm -hmm. tech guy. And <laughs> now we're going to go uh, to, uh, is it Lebeck? Rob in, uh, is, it's Lebeck. It's, it's Lebeck. Lebeck. I think it's French. I don't know. Where is it? Uh, at the top of the grapevine between Los Angeles and Baker Street. I've never heard of Lebec, and I've driven by it, I guess, many times. Well, I'm time. looking out the window, and I can see I-5. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm sure I've gone right 80 at, miles an hour right by Lebec and never even noticed it. And you never noticed my house either. <laughs> and I am a real Neanderthal man. I know nothing about electronics. Uh, I just bought my very first computer. because well, my hang on, we're going to take a break, but when we come back, you're next. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Ah, there's a good rest area right near there. The Lebec Rest Area 57, I believe. The tech guy here to tell you about a brand new... <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. You're going to like that ketchup. It is good stuff. They said there's a couple of Brown University students in 2008 were looking, they were an entrepreneurial... Uh, class and the, you know create a business 
And they're saying, you know, there's only two ketchup makers in the whole country. There's Hunt's and Heinz. And nobody's doing anything interesting with ketchup. There's a million interesting mayonnaises, mustards. There's a billion. So they said, we're going to make a gourmet ketchup. <laughs> and they did, and it's really good. So uh, it's from Sir Kensington. And uh, they also now make mayonnaise. So I ordered some mayonnaise, too. They have a chipotle mayonnaise. So there you go. <laughs> I hope you enjoy. <laughs> I threw ketchup at him. I, there's no, it's, it, yeah, but there's no, there's not like corn syrup or any, you know, weird ingredients in it. It's like, um, it's really good. It's neither ketchup nor ketchup. Oh, no, what's the matter? Heather's doing, I got to get a shot of that. Heather's going, oh, my God. What happened, Heather? Are you okay? Something terrible. What happened? With you privately about line six. I oh, think. okay. We'll talk. We'll talk. You, me, we'll talk. She's coming in to speak to me privately. So why don't you enjoy a lovely view of the chat room while Heather and I have a conversation. <laughs> okay, we're back. Did you hear what Leo said? Um, I like barbecue sauce, and there's a million of those, too. But, you know, you know, I think barbecue sauce and french fries, that's overkill, right? That's too much flavor. No, you like it? No, I agree, but that's because you've never had a good ketchup. This is halfway between Heinz ketchup and barbecue sauce. It's rich, flavorful... <laughs> I, and there's the tin mustard. Made in Brooklyn. So that's got to be good. Mustard <laughs> seeds, mustard powder, vinegar, salt, and water. I'm salivating already. And the honey, I don't know why they put honey in here. Oh, it's sticky. Where's the honey from? True bee honey. Eat American honey. Save American bees. Okay. It's from Franklin, Tennessee. Galberry nectar is the best kept secret of southern coasts, making an elegant amp. Did you know you knew about that? Oh yeah. You already knew about Galberry nectar. Save bees by taking their food from their babies' mouths. That's right. <laughs> In fact, really, let's eat Cuban bees. <laughs> honey non-union honey, non -union honey. <laughs> uh this is their del monte all right so there's hunts heinz and del monte okay all right the name of the ketchup i'll show you i show you sir kensington yeah they got mayo too you got your hot and your classic you got your chipotle mayo, and you got your uh, regular mayonnaise. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. 8888 Ask Leo. We were talking uh, to Rob in Lebec, perhaps of French origin, somewhere on the grapevine in beautiful California. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm sorry to have cut you off, Rob. I Not a problem, sir. You got to do what you got to do. As I say, I'm a Neanderthal, and I know nothing about electronics. I just bought my first computer because my business partner made me, and I'm thoroughly intimidated <laughs> by it. But, but that's not why I'm calling. Okay. My problem is a relatively new product called DVD-R. Uh, they don't mass produce them. Well, you really are a Neanderthal. Those, that's not new. That's like 15 years old, dude. Well, I just became aware of it about a year ago. But they don't called... mass produce them. They... Uh, make it on your request and they're kind of pricey and wait a minute wait okay so dvdr is recordable dvds they've been out for years oh, this no, sounds like this is a company that does something no, like this, that in this case though sir you, you order a particular title and they record it for you and send it to you i see for about 25 bucks. what's what's their website it, it i just get catalogs in the mail and some of them say dvdr and some of them don't how odd and i can't play them and I called uh, uh, Phillips up, that, that's my DVD player, and they say, yeah, yeah, we didn't conform our players to, you know, to, to, to use those. And uh, so I think it's time to step up to Blu-ray, which will play them, 
And also I can collect Blu-rays rather than the lowly DVDs where they're available. I certainly, yeah, I wouldn't buy a, a, a DVD player these days. But although no. you can get them at your local Kmart for twenty nine ninety nine. Okay. Yeah. Well, five quick questions for you then. Yes. Really quick. Five. I'm, I'm counting. I can't hook my Blu-ray to my ancient TV with RCA plugs. No, you We're cannot. Not. That's correct. Okay, I need an HD TV. Okay. Second, are there Blu-ray players... I grew up in the 1950s, you know, wearing cardboard glasses to see 3D movies. Me too, me too. <laughs> with me. Yes. Are there Blu-ray players with passive 3D rather than those pricey? It's and not the player, it's the TV. Active glass. Yeah, it's not the player, it's a TV. And yes, there are, but you have to buy a TV with passive glasses. Uh, okay. Panasonic Vieras are passive and very good. Okay. W what do you like? Plastic oh, actually, Panasonic Vieras are not the Vizios are pa passive, but the, the Blu-ray player doesn't matter. It's just sending a 3D signal to the TV. It's the TV that decides what kind of glasses you need. Okay, what do you like, plasma or pixel? Plasma. Got it. Uh, That's three. HD you got two with, more. With number three. Will my HDTV <laughs> accept the three RCA jacks? From my VHS, DVD, and Pioneer LaserDisc players. Usually it will. You will be very disappointed with what you see. They will not look good because what? all of a sudden you're watching them on a good display and you'll realize how low quality VCRs are. Lasers will look okay, but uh, but they're really not high resolution and you're putting them on a high resolution display. Uh, well, look, but most, like most HD... What TV does now, my 20-year-old magnum. It, it'll look worse, yeah. Because oh, ick. your old TV is smearing them. It's not showing all the uh, ugly, gory details, unfortunately, uh, but right. your HDTV will. Now, by the way, not all HDTVs will have what you, what you have is composite. Uh, that's red, white, and yellow plugs. Not all have them. Most do, and just make sure when you buy it, it does. I shall do that. And I love laser discs. I'm glad. How many laser discs do you have? Oh, too many. <laughs> I went for it nuts. Have you ever heard of eBay? No. There'll be a wonderful time will come when you need money, and eBay will be your best friend on those laser discs. Question well, five. I like them fine. The only thing yeah. I don't like about them is turning them over in the middle of the movie. Yeah, that is annoying, isn't it? Um, <laughs> finally, um, well, fourth, um, aspect ratio. I don't understand what they're doing with these HTVs. Um, it's very simple. Your current television is four by three. That is some multiple of four across and three yeah, one, up and down. It's 1.33 to one. Yeah. Uh, movies, of course, when you go to a movie, they're widescreen. They're actually not 16 by nine. They're wider. Um, but uh, the HDTVs are 16 by nine, not four by three. And uh, 16 by 9 will show an, an HD television show exactly right. In a movie, there'll be a little letterbox. They're letter not cutting boxing. anything off? Pardon me? They're not cutting anything off at the top of the bottom to stretch it out that far? Not if you watch HDTV uh, television, like HBO. If you're watching a movie, they will. You'll see black bar top and bottom. My, uh, I, I'm into old movies. 30s and 40s. Those are all 4.3. In the old days, Those they... are 1.37 That's right. One. Yeah. Um, am I going to see, like, is James Cagney going to be stretched no. out and... You'll have choices. Every TV has choices. You'll watch it. You'll want to watch it in natural mode or dot by dot, which they means they'll be... They have an adjustment on them. They'll be, yeah, they have an adjustment. There'll be black bars on the left and right to make the aspect ratio 4.3. Well, that's okay. I mean, because... Because I have CinemaScope movies. and Yes, exactly. Yeah. Now, when you watch Lawrence of Arabia, it's much wider than 16.9, so there'll be black bars top and bottom, but still it will look much better. There won't be as many as much black bars as there would be on your old TV. Okay, I think that's it, except when, when they advertise a DVD. What do they mean by digital copy included? Ah, so this is mostly on Blu-rays these days, and it's because you they thought, although it's not true, that you couldn't, take a Blu-ray and put it on your laptop or your uh, tablet and watch it. So they, to discourage piracy, they offer a copy-protected digital version suitable for copying to a mobile device. Uh, that's as a convenience to you and mostly to discourage you from figuring out how to crack the copy protection and doing it yourself. Um, and, uh, you know, they're okay. There's a number of ways to do it. They all have copy protection, which means they're less flexible than one might want. Um, but all, all, almost all Blu-rays now come with these digital copies. Hey, you're going to love, I'm telling you, you're going to love the improvement. You're going to love it. Our show today brought to you by our good friends at Carbonite.com. Carbonite online backup. You can try it free for two weeks. Carbonite, C-A-R-B-O-N-I-T-E.com. Use my name, Leo, for the free trial. 
Um, actually, I think John, who is who's it wants to talk about uh, Carmenite? That's Richard in Oxnard, California. So let me get Richard on here real quickly. Hi, Richard. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Hey, Richard. Hi. So you had a question about Carbonite. Yeah, uh, I'm interested in it, and I hear you uh, advertising and so forth. But I'm with the government uh, spying on us in every electronic media they can find. Well, how how uh, safe is the uh, your backup there? But that's that's a really good question. So um, it's safe. In fact, there's a kind of encryption called trust no one. Uh, that means that only you have the keys. And a lot of online backup does not support this. Carbonite does. So Carbonite's one of the... You lose some features when you do this. You lose the ability to look at it from a mobile device, things like that. But if what you want is pure privacy, Carbonite is as good as you can get. It's trust no one encryption. That means even if the government comes to Carbonite with a subpoena or a national security letter, Carbonite can only say, you know, we don't have the keys to this stuff. We can't give it to you. You better go ask the guy. They have, they have to get the passphrase from you. You created the key. It's like PGP encryption. So if that's what you're looking for, that's, a, I think, a good choice. Now, the one weak link would be maybe the uh, transport from your computer to the Carbonite servers. Carbonite uses SSL for that. That also is encryption, strong encryption. But Carbonite does have the keys to that. So, and this is going to be true in every single case for anything you do online. If the government does come to a company and say, look, we want the SSL keys, and the, and, the, and the company turns those over, which they're bound to do by U.S. law, then they can intercept the, the, the transfer up. They can't get whatever's up there already, but they can get whatever the, whatever is going through the public Internet on the way up. So that's important to understand. SSL protects you, but only if the government doesn't have the keys. And in fact, we know they've been going to, unfortunately, companies like Google and others and saying, we want the keas we want the SSL keys. And then uh, that's a little bit scary. Google has implemented something, and Carbonite, I'm sure, will implement it if they haven't already, called Perfect Forward Security. That does help you in this case. It prevents them from getting older keys and looking at older transfers. We know, for instance, the NSA is collecting everything that happens now, uh, even if they don't have the keys, right? Well, if they could go and they could get, go to uh, Carbonite or Google and say in six months, hey, give us the old keys because they change those keys regularly. Give us the old keys. We we have the data from six months ago. We just need the old keys. Perfect forward security prevents that. Prevents that. Heather Hammond, thank you so much. Our musical director, Nathan Staten, thank you. Thank you for being here. Leo Laporte, the tech guy. Have a great geek week. Well, that's it for the Tech Guy show for today. I'm Leo Laporte. Thank you so much for joining us. Don't forget, the Tech Guy is just the tip of the iceberg. We do nearly 30 shows now on the Twit Netcast Network, and you'll find them all at twit.tv. We talk about Windows and Windows Weekly, Macintosh and MacBreak Weekly, iPad and iPad Today. You get your daily dose of tech news from Tech News Today in our weekly roundtable show, This Week in Tech. It's all at twit.tv. And I'll be back next time with another great Tech Guy podcast. Thanks for joining me. See you next time.